Welcome to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm your host, Jenny Taft. This podcast is the full show from today's episode of Undisputed from start to finish. They've got a busy slate, so skip Shannon. Let's get to it. Good morning. Welcome to Undisputed. We are live from Los Angeles. I'm Jenny Taft here with Skip Baelish and yes. Sharp. How are yes. you doing, guys? We are real live today. I can We tell. are happy. Woo. America's team made a blockbuster move yesterday. Oh, blockbuster. Yeah, really? here we Whoa. go. They got Julio. Happy Julio, days. Julio going to the Cowboys. Happy days are here again. Jerry Jones just woke up and did something. You don't Mike Evans did or something. DeAndre Hopkins? Which oh, one of them receivers going we, in? Let's talk about that. He did something. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I'm glad to see you're smiling, uh, Skip. Yeah, okay. We, we, we have a we've lot We've already to got to. Julio. We, we don't need Julio. Oh, y'all got a Julio? We got Amari, so we don't huh. need Julio. Okay. Oh, really? Yeah. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. We're going to get to the Cowboys, but we are also going to talk about Odell. Why is he done with social media? He's Uh-oh. saying mm. bye bye for right now. And then there's oh, LeBron. No. Should he be done for the rest of the season? Mm. Plus, we've got Skip's guy T Silva coming up later yep. in the show. That should Sugs. be interesting. But Sugs. since Skip seems happy today about yep. the Cowboys, let's start there. Dak Prescott has a new target. Randall Cobb has agreed to a one-year deal for reportedly $5 million. Cobb spent his first eight seasons in Green Bay with Aaron Rodgers, but is moving on to Dallas. The Cowboys lost Cole Beasley to free agency, but now they have Cobb to pair up with Amari Cooper. So, Shannon, how much impact will he have on the Cowboys? Skip, I think he'll help them um, with him especially. And he's not old. I think he'll be 29 uh, um, later, later this year. Uh, is his health. Uh, the last couple of years, he's had hamstrings and he's had concussions. Two things that does not get better as you start to age. But when he's been healthy, he's been one of the better slot receivers. Now, Skip, as a pure slot receiver, I believe Cole Beasley might be a tad better, but I believe Randall Cobb is more rounded. He can play outside the numbers, mm. and given that the roundability. He can play outside mm-hmm. the numbers. Yep. We don't know if Hurd's going to come back. We did see Gallup start to blossom towards the end of the season. Uh, did we? The question is, does he pick right back up or does he have a sl- sophomore slump? Mm. We know what Randall Cobb is when he's healthy. Mm-hmm. Uh, it also gives Dallas another playmaker. I believe they're setting this up, Skip. You will have a great, great understanding. <laughs> They'll know exactly what they have in their quarterback with all these playmakers they surrounded him with mm-hmm. because that's what we've seen teams do. Mm-hmm. They get these young quarterbacks, they surround them with playmakers, yep. and then we have an understanding of who you are and whether or not we're going to invest 25, 30, 30 that plus million true. dollars in you. Yep. So Dak doesn't have any excuses, mm-hmm. but Randall Cobb is for a rude awakening mm-hmm. because he just left the most accurate quarterback in all of football. The most accurate? He was 25th in accuracy whoa, whoa, last year. Whoa, 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 he was 25th. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Mm-hmm. How can you make that statement? The most accurate quarterback in can, all of football. Can I beat him? Well, I'm just, I'm, I'm just dumbfounded. I, I'm like, I, I, you lost me there. Well, I, I'm going to find you. Since okay. you're dumbfounded, I'm going to okay. find you and bring you over to this side. The thing is about football, this is how it works, Skip Bayless, is you talk about one season. <sighs> So what about the other nine, ten seasons that Aaron Rodgers has started in the NFL? You make it see 25 and 2. This is what we know about Aaron Rodgers. Dak Prescott never will be able to throw the football as well as Aaron Rodgers. No question. He can what, make- what, 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 wait a second. I'm sorry to interrupt. I apologize, all right, all right. Miss Moderator. Please, I apologize. Tell me. Point taken. Dak Prescott, over his first three years in the National Football League, set the all-time record for completion percentage. The all-time, no one has ever completed a higher percentage of passes than Dak has is in his, his first career three years. done? Well, three years is a pretty big body of work. To is say, it, is he it, just left the most accurate passer. Let me ask you a question. Is three years more than a decade plus? No, but Okay, then. So you what you are you talking Aaron about? Have Rodgers the last two years? Yeah, He's I've watched him last year go 25-2. and two. Yeah. Have Dak Prescott ever have a season yeah. like that? I, I watched him last year be 25th in completion percentage. Can you let me league. finish my argument? I'm okay, going to give you an opportunity. I really appreciate that. Uh, Aaron uh, Rodgers can make uh, throws. Uh, Aaron Rodgers can make throws. No other quarterback in the history of the game can make, and very few quarterbacks will even attempt. He makes plays the way he can extend plays. A lot of times, Dak Prescott extend plays to run the football. Aaron Rodgers is always looking to throw the ball down the field. Or throw it away, either one. I'm sorry to interrupt, but 
it again. Just go ahead, Skip. He shattered the all-time record for throwaways. Go, go ahead. I'm not – I don't want to start. No, no, I got to hear this. No, no. I, 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 I'm, no, I'm being me. enlightened. I mean, I was trying I'm to go. I'm actually no, learning go ahead. from everything no, the Hall of Famer has said. No, go ahead. No, go ahead. You got more. No, I don't have no more. Go ahead. No, no, I'm good. Go ahead. You got Steve gave you stats. I'm going. I'm good. Go Go ahead. Are you, you sure? No, I'm, I'm positive. I'm positive. Go ahead. Once again, you have completely missed the boat. Okay. This is a huge deal for my Cowboys. This is a Super Bowl here we come move made by Jerry Jones. And I, to, to your final point that you made, I am shocked that Randall Cobb took only $5 million to play for the Dallas Cowboys because – it has to have something to do with maybe Dak Prescott. Maybe for the first time in his career, he actually wanted to play with a good guy quarterback who doesn't point fingers and show up his receivers on the field. And a good guy quarterback who, after every loss, will take all the blame in the postgame media session. You think Green Bay offered mm -hmm. $5 million? Mm -hmm. You think Green I have Bay no offered? idea. Exactly. I have because no I can idea. assure you, if Green Bay had offered $5 million, mm -hmm. he'd still be in Green Bay. So what did I tell you yesterday? Again, I, I, this isn't 2020 hindsight. It's not hypocrisy. I sat right here in this same chair yesterday, and I said Randall Cobb is a much more valuable target in free agency than Eric Berry. Didn't I tell you that? Yeah. Because of his age of 28, and if he's healthy, and I give you he, had, he was haunted by the hamstring all last year, and then at the end of the year he had a concussion issue. Okay, can he bounce out of that? I, I don't know, but if he's healthy – He's got a whole lot of high-quality football left in that body. And I'm not so sure about Eric Berry, who's a couple of years older and has been more injured and had more physical maladies and issues, I'll right? Okay. So I said, go for Randall Cobb. And I was stunned because I'd just about given up on Jerry Jones in off-season moves. He made one in the middle of the year last year for Omari. Boom! But off-season, not so much. He just sort of rests on his laurels. But all of a sudden... He got a Randall Cobb, who did make a Pro Bowl he in did. 2014. And I can't believe you just complimented Measley Beasley. You have ridiculed little Measley no. for the first two and a half years we've been together no, on no, this no. show. I, I said, and I paid him a very good compliment, mm -hmm. I said – Beasley might be slightly better as a pure slot, but as a more rounded receiver. Okay. Beasley's not spending a whole lot of time outside the numbers. Okay. You know that. Okay, I know that. And you can, if you need be, you can split Randall yes. Cobb out. He can play both yes, wides. Absolutely, okay? absolutely. Randall Cobb might not be quite as between quick. the numbers quick, nope. but he's a touch faster just by his 40 time, just a touch faster. Mm -hmm. And to me, to my eyes, to my feel, he's a much better deep threat because Cole Beasley never ran past anybody. Right. He never ran by anybody. He could beat them this way, side right. to side. Right. But he couldn't run, get behind right. you. Randall Cobb gets behind people. Well, he's, better, he's more apt, Skip, to take a five-yard route and go 30 as opposed to taking a five-yard well, route going 10. We saw him against the Bears in the, the opening day. It was 75 it, yards. Yeah, it was right. his catch and run. Very few slot receivers possess that yep. type of ability. Wait, there you go. Ooh, I bet I'm going to see this a lot more with – with that star on the side of the helmet. There he goes. Look at this. Just imagine him in blue and silver and white. And well, white. Actually, yeah. actually, had that, had, actually, had he been in the blue and white and yeah. whatever the colors are this year, it wouldn't have happened because he threw that ball behind him and it would have oh, hit the ground. Okay, okay. Uh-oh, my uh -oh, bad. Yep. <laughs> so, Randall Cobb, to me, has star quality. Randall Cobb was a second-round pick. Cole Beasley was always overachieving as an undrafted free agent right out of SMU right there in the middle Stop of Dallas, Stop trying to Texas. diminish the man. Now he out of sight. Now you want to He talk. took his rap career to Buffalo, and I'm good. He can, he can rap in Buffalo all he wants. Big market. Because nobody's going to be listening. Yeah, they right? are. Now, are they? Yep. And I hope he made a ton of money. I'm not sure exactly how much he got. but He got more than what Dallas was offering. All, all I know is all the years I've rooted against Aaron Rodgers' teams or picked against Green Bay on this show and other shows – the guy who always scared me was little Randall Cobb in the slot because he's not that little. He's 195 pounds, so he runs with authority. Well, he look, he might be – he didn't scare you. Jordy Nelson scared you. No. Devontae Adams Rand scared you. Randall Cobb scared Greg you. Greg Jennings scared and you. Look, look at his best year versus Cole Beasley's best year. Like that, that Pro Bowl year. He did make the Pro yeah, Bowl. Yeah, he had okay? 12, over 1,200 yards. He had 14 – didn't he have he 12 had, uh, He almost had 1,300 yeah. and 12 touchdowns. Yes. 
Cole's best year was 2016, Dak's rookie year. Remember, he caught 75 balls to 91 yeah. for Randall Cobb, right. 833 yards. Mm-hmm. Okay, and five touchdowns to Randall's best 12 touchdowns. Yeah, but he uh, Randall Cobb also had in 2012, he had eight touchdowns. Mm-hmm. He had another season in 2015, mm-hmm. he had six touchdowns. Okay. So his best year, mm-hmm. I mean, one of some of his worst years were better were, were than better. Cole's best. And how about postseason? Can we look at those numbers real quick? Randall Cobb's caught 47 playoff footballs. That's Pretty pretty good good. to Cole Beasley's 15. Randall Cobb has five postseason touchdowns to Cole Beasley's zero. I'll take Randall Cobb over Cole Beasley any Sunday, Monday, Thursday, any day. All of a sudden, you have upgraded over Cole Beasley because this is a guy in the locker room when you're putting your stuff on before the game and you look around and you say, he's on my side. Uh, yeah, but he's you on your you, side. You see how you quick you turn on Cole Beasley? I, that didn't take no time, Skip. The I man, got just upgraded. Skip, I got Randall Cobb. Not, he has There's even, no disrespect to Cole yeah, Beasley, but he's not, he's not Randall you know Cobb. What? This is what I want Randall you to understand. Cobb is Anytime a person says, I don't mean any disrespect, the next words coming out of their mouth is about to be really disrespectful. The man hadn't even got out of Dallas. I don't mean Buffalo any yet. disrespect, but he ain't no Randall Cobb. Skip Bayless, right? you ought to be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> You can you at least let okay. the man get the okay. buffalo? Who, who's the game breaker? Who's the difference maker? Who who has star quality? Randall Cobb? Yes. yes. Cole yes. Beasley? Not yes. so much. And the, que- and the okay. question is, Skip, look, you keep saying that uh, uh, $5 million. I'm not so sure there are very many teams lining up for Randall Cobb services, even at that number. I believe had Green Bay come to the table with a very similar offer, an off- uh, 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 he leaves an offense, well, not this offense, but he leaves a quarterback that he's very familiar with. He doesn't have a problem with Aaron Rodgers because guess who was a groomsman in Randall Cobb's wedding? One, Aaron Rodgers. Oh. They go to the Kentucky Derby together. Mm. So clearly, mm. he doesn't have a problem as much as you'd mm. like to make it seem like he mm. does. But anyway, that's neither here nor there now. Mm. You have Randall Cobb. And if he can stay healthy, yes, he has more big play capabilities mm-hmm. than Cole Beasley. Mm-hmm. Health is a big issue. Concussion, hamstring, he's been nicked over the... Mm-hmm. And remember, hold on. Last time he had a 1,000-yard season, that was like five years ago, Skip. Mm-hmm. Like okay. Kind of like Aaron Rodgers' last Super Bowl was 10 years Doesn't ago. Skip, don't do that. Yeah. Oh, he ran the car was on that team, too. Well, oh, so no, why he you... wasn't. He wasn't on that team. Oh, he came he the next year. You're right. Next you know, you came the next year. Right. Don't, don't, don't pin that one on him. Well, oh, so well, he missed out. <laughs> he missed out on the GOAT. <laughs> oh, okay. But he was there when Aaron run that one uh, um, yep. uh, MVP. Look, I'm not trying. All they're doing is upgrading. They're giving all the weapons that Dak could possibly want. He Now you have a situation, you get Jason Witten back. Now, how much that's going to help, I'll let you judge that. But he still has Zeke. He has Amari, uh, a Gallup. If he can continue to take strides, Keep going. and now you got Cobb in the slot. Here we you go. got those three offensive Here we go. linemen. Now yep. Travis, Fre- yep. Travis Frederick back. Come, comes back. Back in business. Back in business. You will have a better maybe under- the maybe the best offensive line in football again. You will have a better understanding back. of the capabilities of one Dak Prescott, mm-hmm. and you will see whether or not he's going to be worth that franchise quarterback mm-hmm. money. I, Skip, I don't like to be the bearer of bad news because mm-hmm. that's nothing. I mean, those people, you know, the Turk, you know, in, in football, they call him the Turk. He comes and he's like, a coach wants to see mm-hmm. you, you know, yeah. and bring mm-hmm. the playbook. Oh. Nobody will. I don't want to mm-hmm. be that guy. Be I hate, I, I could not be a mailman come April because I can't bring, I can't bring them, though, you know, you got to, you got to play Uncle Sam. Mm-hmm. I don't want that job. Nope. Mm-hmm. I don't want this job to tell you, even though you got all them guys, you're still not going to the playoffs mm-hmm. now. We are back in business. You know, you out of business. Look, just think about this. Amari Cooper and Dak have the whole offseason to really get to know each other. They got the mini camp Dak period, the OTA. Dak got 11 commercials no, to film. 13. 13. <laughs> 13. Busy. 13. Un- unlucky 13. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. One more. Yeah, yeah so he ain't got 14. time for Amari. Amari called him. I heard Amari called him. He said, no, nah, I got to film another commercial. Did he? Yeah. I didn't hear that. <laughs> yeah, I did. That's what I, I, I heard. I don't think you heard that at all. <laughs> so they get a whole training camp together. They get all those preseason games together. True. They will be ready to rock on game number one in ways they were not Who ready play what game on one? money. I don't know. It hadn't been announced yet, has it? The, I don't think they so. They probably will no. take the L anyway. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Take the L. You Does it matter so. who it is, Shannon? So, 
Alan Hearn suffered a career threatening, right. it, like oh, a dislocated yes. ankle and a fractured knee, mm -hmm. but they say he is on track wow. to be back for training camp. Remember, he's a big bodied, he's 6'1, right. 205 ish. Right. Right. And you know what? He made a bunch of big plays last year. And uh, as you mentioned, Michael Gallup, by the end of the year, you're seeing like mm -hmm. little bursts of brilliance, like, right. ooh, ooh, that'll yeah. work, that'll work, he made right? Some big time plays. Okay. Yes, he did. Then the immortal Jason Witten comes back. As a blocker as well as a receiver, a third down target. Am I right? When was the last time you heard somebody line, line up like, oh, my goodness, I cannot wait to have this blocking tight end? Well. It's a passing you game. You know what? One guy thinks that. <laughs> 21 thinks that because 21, Zeke, missed him last year. No, he didn't. He led yes, the league in rushing. No, he did. Listen, did he, how, how, did he lead the night in rushing at the Coliseum against the Rams? That's your offensive line. Yeah, bro. well, that's. That's the, your offensive line. And that's your quarterback. If your quarterback can no. throw the lift and coverage. He, he it, was good that night. No, he, he wasn't. Really good. Stop doing that. They won the not second good. half. No, they did. They lost. They, they, well, they won lost. the second. They half. were in such a big deficit in yeah. the first half yeah. that the second half was. Think, didn't think of the winter. tight end core now. You you know tight end play, right? You got a Hall of Famer in Jason Witten mm -hmm. on top of Blake Jarwin and Jeff Swain and Dalton Schultz, the rookie out of Stanford. Oh, what about the other guy? Huh? I don't know what happened to him. Oh, I don't know. He ain't he's he's going to try out for the NBA next year. No, 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 no. He's no. not back with that. I don't know. That other guy. Rico. Rico. Oh, oh yo, that Rico. Oh, Rico. Oh, he loves Rico. But, but all of a sudden, the cupboard was bare. Game one last year at Carolina. No, the wasn't it bare. was bare at receiver. I just kept saying, "Who's going to catch the football?" I don't know. All of a sudden, it's like, "Who won't catch the?" Football? Football. Whoa, whoa, and whoa. I didn't even mention Tavon Austin, who's had his hamstring problems. Did you see against Seattle, big punt return? I saw him against gets the Rams. Deep, gets deep. Woo. You know what's going He's going to make big plays. He can run little slot reverses. He's, he, yeah. he, he is a, he's what we call a gadget yeah, guy. He can That's what he is. Yeah, yeah, and every now and then, he'll give you a big play on yep. the punt return. Yep. And he'll you know run a jet sweep, mm. sweep or they get him a jailbreak screen. Mm. They hit it, hit a, uh, throw him the ball real quick. But mm -hmm. you're not going to make a living for giving the ball to him still. Mm. So, look, you know how you... Icing on a baking Super Bowl cake. That's no. what he is. No, icing. I, mean, I don't know about you, but my granny can make great pound mm. cakes mm. with no icing. Really? So, if you got a good cake, you don't need no icing. Huh. See, you need all that fluff because you know why? The, the bare essential, that cake that you're talking about yep. is one Dakota Prescott. And so, you trying to dress it up so it tastes better. Mm. But it's still... So help Just me a out. Just little bunk cake with no butter. Who had the most <laughs> game-winning drives over the last three years? Which quarterback in the NFL? Was it Tom Brady? Mm. No. no. Was it bounce it to him wins? No. Who else could it have been? Dak Prescott? Dakota Prescott had the most game-winning drives of any quarterback over the last three years. And Game-winning, clutch, winners intangibles, big play making, Dak Prescott. Finally has some weapons on the outside as well as the weapon behind him. Oh, yeah. You, well, well you always tell me it's Zeke or Bust. It is. Okay. So it is. Well. Hold on. You just said yesterday you didn't want to say this, mm -hmm. but they should prioritize Zeke first. Okay. That's what you I said. I did because his window closes so fast. He deserves Why it. You He's care earned about, it. Why you care about that when you got the quarterback? The quarterback's just fine. He's a team guy. He's Brady-esque. He'll take a hometown discount, and he will wait on that discount. He gets all of it. He's making all the commercial Stop, money. Cut, don't worry about that. Boy, I, that they're good. Doing. They're good. No. Listen, you can build on Zach. Those are broad shoulders on, on Dak. No, you can build on Zeke. Yep. And he's running the football because yep. what we've seen when Zeke Elliott runs the football, okay, when good. he's dominant, controlling good. it, yeah. they're a much okay. better this will Football make the passing game even more effective because it's going to be lethal next year. I just can't believe you, Skip Bayless, that mm -hmm. you would sit across that, that table from me and talk about Dak Prescott is better than Aaron Rodgers. I can't believe I didn't say that. Yes, you did. I said he's more accurate. No, he's not. Well, he just I could just do the numbers. Look Skip. over the last three years. I, I can't go back ten years with Dak because he was – Playing high school football. I can't we'll, do we'll that. Add, we'll add those okay. up, too. Skip, yeah. you know good and well Dak Prescott is not more accurate than Aaron Rodgers. Now, stop. I don't, What are you talking about? The numbers scream he's more accurate. With all them checking down on Dinkin and Duncan. The, the last two years, I got to tell you, your man Aaron. 25 He is two. on the downside. Well, I sure want to be on uh, that downside. Yeah. 25 and 2. Yeah, 25, really. 25 tubs. Yeah. Why is that? Because he just throws the football away. Am I going to take a chance on that? No, I think I'll throw it in the fifth well, row. Well, Aaron Rodgers say, mm. if we need third and 18, why am I going to check the ball down mm. two yards? Mm. And so what? Oh, yeah, I got a completion. <sighs> Woo, look at my completion percentage. What did your researcher tell you Green Bay's record was the last two years? Help me out. Playoffs? No. 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 Mm -mm. Aaron has been Aaron has been nicked. Oh, he man. hasn't played up to air because uh -huh. here's the thing, Skip. 
See, we don't even know what the standard is for Dak. Mm. We know what the standard is for Aaron Rodgers. Mm. Two MVPs, a Super Bowl, and a Super Bowl MVP. Mm. That's the standard. Mm. We know this guy has a four-to-one touchdown interception ratio. Mm. No other quarterback in the history of the game. Not in the last three years. And you know what, Skip? This year is the anniversary of the NFL. Jenny, I don't know if you noticed that. 100 years old. And in 100 years, nobody has a higher touchdown to interception ratio Mm. than one Aaron Rodgers. Who has one Super Bowl. Period. End of story. One Super Bowl. It won't be soon. Yes, it will. It won't be soon. Yes, it will be. Just wait. Hold on, you make see, a Tom Brady's been to nine Super Bowls. Aaron we ain't talking about one. We ain't talking about one. Tom. How, how this is not that? Tom. Is this one, is not about Tom. Is one this is not about Tom. Tom's on vacation. So, no. Or he might be Tom's, driving one of them yeah, new uh, uh, Aston Martins that he got. <laughs> but this is not about Tom. This is about Dak Prescott. Skip, I tried to give you some credit. I tried to say, look, what they're doing is that they're giving him weapons and they want to really see because they said, well, you be beating that drum. Give him some weapon, Jerry. Give him some weapon. Dad doesn't have he enough gave help. Him, he gave him a big weapon. Yeah, that's you. You keep. You love to do that. Oh, LeBron, I don't have enough help. And all you do every Monday, you come in here. Dad doesn't have enough help, Jerry. I won the division. I did it every. How? Did, how? Why would I need to do it every? Oh, you did it. You did it 2017. They won the. You did it 2017. Okay. Won the division. And you cried. And you cried, Jerry. Go get him some help. Well, he needed help. He just needed. Uh, no, you need no to be suspended. You don't need no help. Yeah. Brady don't need to get no help. Uh, Brady gets no help. No. Thank you for no, saying Brady that. Brady get no yeah. help. He has done more Brady, with, stop with it. less stop than it. any stop, quarterback stop in doing the history that. of football. Stop. All you Thank try you to for do, saying All that. you try to do is diminish mm. Julian Edelman, mm. Gronkowski, and all, all those other guys. That's all you try and do. But I'm not going to let you do that today. Those guys, hold on. Julian Edelman is one of 53 guys that can say, you know what? I'm a Super Bowl MVP mm. in a hundred year history. I'll give you, he's a little better than Cole Beasley. <laughs> you know, you know he's a little just better. A little bit. Just a little better. Skip, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. He's a seventh he's round a little, quarterback. You, know? Skip, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Kent, Skip, right. you ought to be ashamed of yourself. I'm, I'm just telling you the truth. Yeah, you're not yeah, telling me no truth. Right he's now. a lot, lot better than Cole yeah. Beasley. He's much better than Cole. I think Cole Brady Beasley. went up into like the tenth row during warmups, and he said, "Hey, you, what's your name?" And he said, "Julian." He said, C- "Come on down here, Skip. I'm going to make you a star." Everybody, what happened? Yeah, Everybody, Danny Amendola. You, you. where are you from? Is better. <laughs> I, I'm from Chris Hogan. Hmm? Oh, and and when he asked Julian where he's from, he said, "You you won't believe this. I, I'm from where you're from, San Mateo." He's from the Bay Area. Yeah, he might. I don't care where he's from. He was just there visiting. He's a heck of a ball player. He was play. visiting, just he, watching the game, and he not. picked him out of he, the stand. He, I don't know if he fit, would appreciate that. He step. fits <laughs> what they do very well. But this is not about Julian. This is not about Tom Brady. This is about your team. I'm and, so happy. And they've given him more help. They've given happy. him more help. Because now you can this shed no good. more tears. Oh, Dak doesn't have big. enough help. This We're going to see. Yep. Same thing going to happen. Yep. Still not going to play. Now, if Randall could just play safety, I'd be really good. Can he play a little safety, go a little both ways? No. Hmm? You're not going to the playoffs. Yep. We're going to what was more it, than the Super Bowl. You're not. Yep. It's mm. not happening. It's mm. harsh. Mm. Whispering over there. Mm-hmm. At least he's happy about this, I love it. Wishful. I love it. Because I want you to have that, that same energy. I will you know how you come and you how bang in the table? Somebody knows hey. somebody's in trouble. Hey. Will you start? Somebody knows. Would, Somebody knows by week this seven, is a big deal. By week seven, this yeah. is what I want you to be doing. Yeah. You come out here on week seven, you throwing papers all over the place. Mm. We got lots of do on it. Yeah, I'm oh, yeah. doing the do. No, you're not. Yeah. No, you're not. I'm getting it back. 2019. Mm-hmm. How much do do you have to get to trade it for like a Bel Air mansion? <laughs> I was gonna say you know? we might have to. Up I, the, look uh, I'm down a little. I'm down a couple of cases. Mm, a, a couple few. of. Cases. I'm down a couple few. of cases. Yeah. But hey, that's how Vegas works. Yeah. You know, somebody <laughs> get up real big. But yeah. the thing is, we'll be, I can weather. Vegas can weather the storm. Oh. I'm gonna weather the storm and get all the cases that I want plus mm. double. It, it, it's two and a half years worth of cases. I don't care. Okay. I'm going to win. He's pretty confident mm. over here. Oh, yeah, he's feeling good. Oh, yeah. And, oh. and somebody's feeling not so good. You know why he's feeling confident? Because mm. they hadn't played a game yet. Mm. But you wait until start playing these games. All right. All right. Here we go. <laughs> here we go. How about this, guys? Odell is saying he is done Ooh. with social media. Ooh. Uh, Ooh. I'm not so sure I believe that. We will discuss <laughs> next. Don't forget, you can check us out every day on the Fox Sports channel on Sirius XM. We'll be right back. <laughs> No mercy. Hey guys, Jenny Taft here. If you're looking to add some excitement to the tournament games, make Bet DSI your tournament betting partners. Bet DSI has been paying winners for 20 years and is top rated on betting review sites. 
BetDSI has a very user-friendly interface, mobile site, and has the fastest payouts in the industry. Simply play, win, get paid. BetDSI offers betting options for everything. Bet on March Madness, NBA, NHL, and all other major sports. Politics, reality TV, virtually everything. Try live betting at BetDSI where you can bet on games from start to finish, every play and every minute until the end. New members get 100% bonus match using promo code UNDISPUTED. Once again, go to BetDSI.com and use promo code UNDISPUTED and get this limited time 100% bonus offer to make some extra cash betting the madness this March and get one free million dollar contest entry just for signing up with promo code undisputed. It's only a game until you bet it at BetDSI. No mercy. Odell Beckham Jr. left the Big Apple for Cleveland last week, and now he apparently wants to lay low. Beckham posted, then deleted yesterday, that he is taking a break from social media and even his cell phone. Odell wrote that he's, quote, taking an emotional, mental, physical, blah, blah, blah vacation. At this moment, for the next couple of days, I'm going dark. Shannon, what does this tell you? (laughs) Didn't tell me anything. Odell is Odell play into the very people that he says he doesn't want to be bothered with unless it's something he also said unless it's something pressing Mm -hmm. don't text him or don't call him skip he's going to a new situation a new team new expectations Odell was actually surprised that the Giants traded him Odell never in his wildest imagination skip Bayless Mm -hmm. believed that the Giants would trade him in other words they got tired of your bull job Odell they did I don't care look I've been on this earth almost 51 years, Skip, and uh, been in a few relationships, good, bad, some indifferent. Um, It doesn't matter. There will come a time that someone will get tired of your BS. And the Giants said, Odell, as talented as you are, we're tired of your BS. And him going zero, now I get, for me, I've always felt this way, Skip. Sometimes I think these guys are doing documentaries. Because they document everything. Oh, I'm taking a shower. Oh, I'm brushing my teeth. Oh, I'm eating breakfast. Oh, I'm in my car. Oh, I'm driving to work. Oh, I'm, I'm like, dude. Some do, yeah. So now he's going zero dark 30. From what? That's what you always do. Skip, when the trade went through, where was he? In Paris. Skip, where is he at right now? In Paris with Neymar or some, some soccer. Some footballer. Wee oui, wee. Oui. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He Skip, loves it over there. Here's the thing. Even though he said, how, how do you go zero dark 30 and then you announce it? I, normally, people just fade away, Skip. You know what? Hey, I need to tell you anybody I'm going on. To worry. I don't need to tell anybody I'm going on vacation. Dip. I'm out. See you when I get back. Just, just one other point of order there. Mm-hmm. Do, do you realize? Okay, only probably a very few people are, are capable of texting, calling, or FaceTiming because you would need his number, right? right? Right. So does the world have his phone number? Yes. No, they, well, they don't. Right, they, mean, no, of course just, not. Just a few of his right. close, closest friends, right? right? Right. And he probably changes his number right. regularly if I know right. him. So, so he is announcing to his close personal friends, don't text, call, or FaceTime unless it's of the utmost importance. But he's announcing that to the world. I know. Like he's telling his close friends to the world. Right. Like he when needs, you could have picked when you could have texted them just, or called yeah, them or FaceTimed right. them. Mate, do it privately. Right. Because they deserve that. If right. you're one of the close personal friends, you're saying, Oh, you inform me via this? But this is and not he a- called it a PSA, public service. Like the Everyone. world needs to know <laughs> I'm going to be dark. Let's get it. This was not, what? This was not about his closest friends yep. and family. This was about the very people <laughs> on the medium in which he posted it. This was for them. <laughs> this has always been about them. Okay, so I saw another quote yesterday from a close personal friend of his named Saquon Barkley. Uh-huh. Good kid. Tough, yes. strong young man. Yes. And Saquon was talking about the moment that he was FaceTiming with Odell soon after he had heard he had been traded because he called to say, what happened? How are you? And the quote was that Saquon says, I don't think he was that happy about it. Well, that's the first negativity I've heard about the move to Cleveland because it was reported that Cleveland 
was a preferred destination if, in fact, he were going to be shipped out right. of New York, right? Well, Victor Cruz also said on one of the other shows, Skip, that when he talked to Odell, Odell was upset that he didn't have more of a choice in where he was going. And Victor said, Odell, it doesn't work like that. It does not work that way. So that's what, see, Skip? Not only did they trade him, see, he wanted to control. Well, I want to go to L.A. Well, I want to go here. They're like, nah, we're going to ship you where we want you to go. Okay, so now I'm starting to wonder, because this post, this IG <laughs> post is about, <laughs> I need to get away to process, to reevaluate some of the things in my life. Well, it leads me to believe he's a little upside down over the trade. Yes, like, of wait course. a second. They just dumped me. Yeah. Yes. They shipped me to Cleveland? To Cleveland. And of again. all, Cleveland might be up and coming. Right. But they're still known as the Brown Skip. Okay. Obviously, LeBron helped put Cleveland back, back on, on the, the map sports map, yeah. but but LeBron's from from there. Yeah, he's from okay? Akron. <laughs> right. Okay, so it, it sort of disqualifies LeBron. It's not like he chose to go to this outpost in Cleveland. Correct. He wanted to because right. he's, he's, it's in his right. heart and soul. Okay, yes. got it. But for Odell, he's like, well, LeBron ain't there anymore. And I know his, his great friend Jarvis is there, and he loves Baker and the receivers coach, blah, blah, blah. But – is it enough? I'm starting to wonder, are you all in, Baker, or are you half out here? Here's the thing with, with Odell, Skip. Jarvis is one of his best friends, but Jarvis doesn't have the reach of Neymar. No. He doesn't have the reach of he a doesn't. Drake no, I or agree. LeBron James. He views himself in yeah. that light. I, I, That's not what Jarvis is, Skip. See, and he can say all what he wants to say right now, new chapter. Uh, uh, I saw where he posted, Skip, that he had uh, the Rocky scene where Apollo Creed and Rocky's running on the beach and they're talking about, let's see who gets to work first. All that's fine and good. The test for Odell Beckham and the Cleveland yep. Browns and Baker Mayfield yep. will come when the regular season starts, Skip. What happens when he gets two passes? Mm -hmm. What happens when he gets three targets? That's going to be the test for Odell Beckham and the Cleveland Browns. Then we'll see. Oh, that's fine. And good. Oh, I just can't wait. I'm so excited. It doesn't seem like he's very excited, but I'm just saying we hear that all the time. It's a new chapter, a new beginning. I, what, you, what you got to process? What you got to process? It's over. Ain't no processing. You ain't getting no driver's license talking about we need to process this or a late payment or something, Skip. This has already been processed. The league office processed this the day it went through. It's a done deal, bro. Yeah, you, you can't fix uh, it. You, you yeah, can't undo yeah. it, right? This is not a bad dream. No. Nope. This is reality, bro. They shipped you to Cleveland. Let that sink in. A 25-year-old mega superstar in the NFL, a team said, we're done. We're finito. Finished. Kaput. No more. And you want to know the truth? Mm. This post is exactly why the Giants said, we're out. Like, we've seen enough. Yes. And again, they shouldn't have given him all that money in the first place. But after one year of him having his money, yes. they said, you know what? More trouble than worth. Good riddance, yes. we're out. Sorry. Let that sink in, yeah. Skip. They said, you know what? We'd rather have a 30, almost 38-year-old quarterback knowing that he's a shell of himself. Yeah. Than a 25-year-old, because you know what? That 38-year-old, he might not be what he once was, yep. but he's not going to cause disruptions. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be one thing to the next. Because I'm sure the head coach, I'm sure the owner, John Maurer and, mm -hmm. and the Titian, I'm sure they got tired of ask, answering questions about Odell that wasn't football play related. Well, did you hear what Odell said? Did you hear about Odell uh, over here? Did you hear Odell over there? What they got to do with him? They and, and one of those came off an incident in Paris. Paris. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. They they hear nothing. Uh, uh, John, what do you, how how good was that performance that Odell that two hundred yard day Odell? They was asking him nothing football no. game related. No. It was already peripheral stuff that had to do with Odell's behavior. Mm -hmm. They, they mean, let's, no, I'm no, nah, I'm good. I'm we good. We out. That will get old. <laughs> you, uh, so I believe that Odell has become the most self-absorbed and self-conscious athlete I've ever observed from a distance. Mm -hmm. He's obvious, he, he has superstar capability, yes. but he hasn't played to that level consistently as it relates to winning football games. Mm -hmm. And the problem in New York was he became so self-conscious of, I'm Odell Beckham Jr., mm -hmm. that he knows every second, standing on the sideline, in the huddle, the cameras are it's just trained on yeah. him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, after a while, he thinks, I got to do an Odell thing. I got to do this right. or that. 
and you start to act up, act out, mm -hmm. and it's hard to win that way because, as you know, football is the ultimate team unity game. Correct. You have to be together. You can have stars, but everybody has to blend and unite. Got it. I'm, I'm not sure Odell is capable of blending and uniting. I thought this was a great opportunity on a young, interesting, upcoming, on-the-verge team to show you can be a leader, which he always says, I, I could be the leader. I, leader of, can you lead yourself? But Skip, and the thing is, in, in, a team, in a team sport, I don't care if Brady could have 700 touchdowns, yep. but if they're not winning, yep. he's not going to be no. what he is. Mm -mm. Odell is a very unique individual because he saw he could have individual success he did. without team success, and he didn't need it. So what? what, what, what that what, is true. Why he, do I he need? He didn't need to yes. win. Yes, because he's playing in New York. He's playing in New York, making one hand yeah. grabs, yeah. making a putting on the show pregame. <laughs> So, Skip, why do I need to win? Why do I need you when I can get everything I need without you? I don't know. I mean, I'm not going to the bank for a loan if I got the money. If I can go ahead and just buy it out of my pocket, yeah. what do I need a loan? So, and I'm like, well, y'all are loan to me, but I don't need a loan. I'm good. I got the credit. I got the cachet by myself. Hmm. So, is it possible he's somewhere sitting on some beach just meditating about, can I sacrifice me? For us, can can he do that? Because next year he has a chance. Next couple of years, uh -huh. he's got a hot young quarterback. Mm -hmm. He's in a really good situation with an offense full of weapons that will take some heat off him as far as constant double, triple team focus on you. Right? right? Mm -hmm. you, you might get some single coverage occasionally. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you have a chance to show you can be a real live star football player who impacts the scoreboard as far as W's and L's go, right? Skip, these guys. Is he capable? I don't know because he's had such success, as you mentioned, the know. IG followers. He's 13 million. Yeah. He's gotten a big contract, and he hasn't won a whole lot. So what's the, the thing is, what's the benefit for him? Right. If he gets everything that he wants without having to have team success, what's the benefit of having team success? Hmm. Not much. Exactly. That's a good point. And this is the first time I've ever heard this in this context about, about any star athlete. He doesn't need to win. Right. Really. We said, think about it. We said LeBron, LeBron is great, but he needs to win a title. Sure. We said even Peyton Manning, as great as he was, he needed to win something. Got a breakthrough. Yep. Think about that. How, how many high seeds did Peyton not capitalize on exactly. in Indy? Yeah. And, and, and we held that yeah. against him for the longest time until he finally broke through. He broke through. Odell has had so much success for only helping get a team to the playoff once, and then in that game he didn't play well. Yep. But he's had a lot of individual success, and praise has been heaped upon him. So he really doesn't need the team success because ultimately, Skip, when it comes down to it, when it's all said and done, only the quarterback is judged by titles. Mm -hmm. That's the only guy That's that it true. really matters nope, to. You're right. Nobody said, oh, that kicker, he, oh, he, oh, that kicker. Oh, he can't be a great defensive lineman because uh, he ain't winning. That, that's not how it works. But Odell, I've never seen anything like Odell. I've never seen, in all my years of playing the game and covering the game, I've never seen anybody enjoy the individual success without having the team success that comes along with it. We always bring up that catch that changed him. I mean, he is a, he is a success regardless, and change is hard. He has to want to be a mm -hmm. different player, yep. different person. Maybe this is the first right. step. We see less of him, but he's a better teammate. It's just a lot. Let's get back to tell you the story. Ask Deion, Deion Sanders, yeah. very, good, very good friend of mine. As great as he was in Atlanta, he's like, I got to win something. He said, y'all trying to make me out to be a loser. He understood. Listen, I used to watch those Falcon <laughs> games. He was the greatest sideshow on yes. earth. Because he's going to return an interception or a punt yes. for a touchdown. Yes. He's, he's like, going to high step yeah, all the way yeah. into the end zone. Right. But he understood in yep. order for him to be the ultimate success story, yep. he needed to win. Yeah. He needed to be a cowboy. No, no stop that. Mm, just a quick little. Y'all bought a Super Bowl. Oh, we bought a Super Bowl. Yeah, you did. You say we just quickly. bought one with Randall Cobb. <laughs> oh, really? Really? <laughs> okay. I mean, let's just keep him happy, Shannon. He's oh, yeah. excited Give about me my the new day. guy. Okay. Give him yeah. this. Give him this. That was moment. a good. That was a good. That was a good sign. No mercy.
thing. I want to know what Skip now has to say about LeBron because yep. he sat out last night's loss to the Bucks, but that doesn't mean he'll sit out the rest of the season. Luke Walton shot that notion down yesterday saying, quote, we're a much better team when he's on the floor. So well, I'm looking forward that was a shocking to him getting back out there. Yeah, uh, they're definitely better with him out there. But the Lakers' playoff hopes are basically done since they're 10 and a half games out of a what? playoff spot what? with only 11 games to go. Impossible. It's basically done, not officially mm. done. Shannon, should LeBron just shut it down? No, 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 really? no, no, no. He should not shut it down. Because here, see, LeBron is in a very, very tough situation. If he shuts it down, now what do they say? See, he quit on his team. He don't even want to be a part of it because they already pick apart everything he does. If he doesn't sit on in, in, in Kyle Kuzma's lap, who's J they? Well, Skip Bayless, <laughs> Skip Just say Clyde. it. Skip Just say it. Acknowledge I'm it. the only one. No, Skip Bayless and they Clyde. Is a, and Clyde they, they is a he. Right? And Clyde Frazier, unless he's away. sitting in one of his teammates' lap or they're sitting in his lap, he doesn't care. Now, LeBron James, see, LeBron doesn't care. He got his own bottle of Gatorade. Like, if you don't if you don't take the bottle right out of JaVale McGee's hand and turn it up to your mouth, he's not a team player. Mm. The thing is, if he sits, because remember, a couple of years ago, LeBron was resting, and it's like, there's some kids that pay parents played a lot of money, yeah. and LeBron is resting, Sorry. led by Skip Bayless, and then... Michael Jordan played 10 straight years, played all 82 games. Is that right? Now. Wow. That was a big deal now, that was happening. Yes, yeah. and now Skip Bayless, what, what's he playing for? He has nothing to accomplish. You know why he's playing, Jenny? This is why LeBron James is playing. He wants to pass Kareem Abdul-Jabbar because the only way he can, be, you know, have – the apologist led by LaShannon Sharp. Thank is the, you. He He's had, in there now. You're he has right. the stats. Yeah. Now, he has a better argument. He's the all-time leading scorer and yada, True. yada, yada. True. I know what you're trying to you're do. You're spouting wisdom now. Because I know what you – Skip. The Lakers still have LeBron James on a minute restriction. And what that does, with the exception of the Knicks game, is that even when they go on this run, he gets to, say, eight-minute mark, because basically he's playing 32 minutes. He played eight minutes in the first and eight in the second and eight in the third and eight in the fourth. Mm -hmm. And so even if they get on a nice run, he reached that plateau, they snatch him up out of the game. Mm -hmm. But I don't really – I mean, because look at it. You got Caruso and you got Jonathan Williams. You got G League players that's playing more minutes than LeBron James. But you know Not what? Not Sunday in New York, they but, didn't. But, mm -hmm. but, but this is what this is what makes him great. He's like, you know what? It's not, it didn't turn out how we wanted. The ship's going down, mm -hmm. but I'm El Capitone. He's not gonna jump shit. No, mm -hmm. no, I couldn't, mm -hmm. I couldn't, he couldn't sleep. He could not sleep at night knowing. That he could have been there to maybe get a few life preservers out. Really? To help somebody. Huh. So, no, he's not sitting out. And, yes, we're going to pass Kareem, whether you like it or not. Well, you got a long ways to That's go. okay. We got plenty of time. And, and he ain't you, going nowhere. You just left a game on the table last night. That's okay. We got plenty you of time. You could have scored your 27. Mm -hmm. That would have been a big 27 toward Kareem. Let's skip. So what? It's going to take us the same amount of time it took Kareem. It took twenty. It took Kareem twenty years to get to thirty-eight thousand. It's going to take us. Where are we going? That's what we love to do. We love to play basketball. Yeah, we got all these other endeavors. Mm -hmm. I my, <coughs> excuse me. I had my Buzz Light years on the date, LeBron James. But that was that's that's Toy Story. That's not uh, 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 what's the uh, what's the money he doing the reboot of Michael Jordan Space, Space Jam. Jam. Mm -hmm. That's not Space Jam. But I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. Yes, I know he has a lot of fire. You know, a lot, lot of uh, uh, prods mm -hmm. in the iron, uh, fire. fire yeah. But he's busy. But Skip, his number one priority is basketball. Mm -hmm. Everything originates from that. Mm -hmm. But yet, if he left New York on Sunday night. And he saw, I don't have to play all the way until, what is it, Friday? Friday. So he could have five days in L.A., Brentwood. He with his team. Go over the scripts did, for Space Jam. You know, what did he with his team? Huh? I, what, I don't know. Did, was did you there? see him on the sideline? I ain't watched. I, I, I couldn't. You know what? Up. I tried to watch one quarter of it, and I swear to you, I just said, I can't watch this anymore. No, no Giannis so or, or LeBron? I yeah. switched both games over to whatever the other two, Golden State and Minnesota. Yeah. Yes. But there's another Thank game I was watching. watching. I can't Houston, remember. Atlanta? <laughs> yeah, Houston, Atlanta. That's, mm -hmm. Those are the two I put on. At that point, you compared them So to here's my shit, issue, so. and, and this just wears me out okay. about your man, LeBron James. 
Which side of mouth are you speaking out of now? I just need to know what the truth is. What is it? Do you have a groin issue ongoing or not? Because he said sore. He, it, the same groin is sore, sore, according to LeBron. Yes. Okay, if that's true, then you should shut it down no, for no, the no, rest of the year. No, 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 it's sore. Okay, well, it, you shouldn't even tempt fate. That's why it. we got five We got five days off. It'll be right. It'll oh, be it'll be right? Yep. And it's still plaguing him after the tweet the next yeah. day, after the MRI. Still, when he said, the wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Dodged a bullet, hashtag back in no time. Dodged a bullet with, with praying hands. Like, the tweet never will thank die. You, Skip. Oh, thank you, God. Did, Dodged a bullet. You know, Skip, you, Dodged Skip, a bullet? I thought you, he'd be back I, in a, what, no, a game? No, I'm not gonna let you do this. I'm, you, I didn't do it, he did it. You know there are varying degrees of injuries okay, to a groin. Okay. I, the, the truth is, I don't know how hurt he is because you don't know, no. Jenny doesn't know, nobody knows. I'm gonna take Only that worse. guy knows. I'm gonna take him. Does he look like okay. a faker to you? Okay. Well, yeah, yeah sometimes because <laughs> he and his team are notorious for planting excuses when he needs them the most. And it just drives me nuts because he's better than that. There's he's no excuse, great. Skip. There's okay. no excuse. He, they were look, injured, look but they didn't history. make the playoffs. After he just flamed out and melted down against Boston in that last playoff series the first time around in Cleveland, and the, his advisors, his, in, you know, his inner circle, yeah. they planted the story to me, and I don't know, maybe it was true, that he had to be sedated for, before games four, five, and six. It looked like he played sedated to me because you know he was just like, like sleepwalk. You know well, well, that was, and I'm like sedated because of a locker room issue. Sedated before a basketball game. Seri I'm supposed to swallow that. And then, how about last year? How about in the finals? What happens? He melts down at the end of game one. No, Did George Hill okay, melted okay, down. Okay, J.R. Smith melted down. Right, whatever. LeBron didn't take the last shot. He dished it to George Hill. Whatever happened, then you're tied going to overtime. You got them on the ropes. You got them on their heels. And he pouted and sat away from the team on the bench. And then he wouldn't shoot the first two and a half minutes of overtime. They fell behind by seven points. Ball game, sweep. And then what did he do? <laughs> How did he attend the the post four, game four yeah, media right session. Game. He put on a soft cast on his right hand. He didn't put it on the doctors. Put oh, it on. the doctors put a soft cast on, which we had not seen the whole series. But the story was planted with the apologists in the media, the LeBron protecting media. Oh, he was so upset after game one that he smashed his hand on the whiteboard in the locker room and broke his hand, according yeah. to team insiders. Yeah. Rich Skip. Paul, Maverick, J I don't know. J.R. Skip, yeah. you know that J.R. still believes that he and LeBron mm. are teammates in Cleveland? Mm. <laughs> that was, that, 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 that's J.R., that's his teammate. Uh -oh. J.R. Smith okay. still believes that he and LeBron are teammates in Cleveland. Okay, so what am I supposed to think this, this time? Because LeBron had his worst moment of this season in the fourth quarter at Madison Square yeah. Garden. He missed the most fourth quarter shots he's ever missed in a regular season game, 11 in the fourth quarter. Right. 11, and then on the, the go-ahead shot, the, the potential game winner, he gets blocked full-handed. He gets jump ball blocked by Mario Hazonia. And the next thing I hear is he has a sore groin and he can't play. Hence, plant excuse with apologists. He it couldn't is. jump. He had a sore groin. No, okay, if he didn't shut it down. No, shut it down. Skip, no did way. he look limited to you in the no, fourth quarter? No, he didn't look limited. Did, did you see one play? In New York on Sunday morning here, you know, obviously Sunday afternoon, did you see one play in New York in which LeBron looked like he had a pull groin? Skip. I didn't see one. The thing is, did he limp? Did he drag his leg? Nope. I'm, am I shocked that he missed 11 shots? I'm probably more shocked that he I, – I, I, I don't – can't recall a game in which he took that many okay. shots in one quarter. Fair enough. Let alone just miss. I'm talking okay. about just shots in period. 15, Forget. Yeah, right? he took 15, yeah. missed 11 of those. Mm -hmm. Skip, let's not overreact, okay? Well, which is it? I don't know. It, seriously, if the yeah. groins yeah. flared again, I don't know. But see, it's easy. You know what, Skip? But now this you can, you can this say, tells, well, he had the pull. You down. know what? This tells me a lot about LeBron mm. because he has an out, Jenny. Mm. He has the groin injury. Yeah. He 11 yeah. games going the, uh, to go. They're not going anywhere. He can shut it down. No questions, no, no, no harm, no foul. But he says, you know what? I need Kareem. Oh well, well, why wouldn't he say you that? See what you I, do? I'm not condemning you see, you him. I'm not criticizing. He needs Kareem. But they, go for Kareem. No, no, no. Chase no. him. You told me that he came to be Michael B. Jordan. Now he won't sit down. Now you want him to sit down. Which is it?
Michael B. Jordan still works in the postseason, and plus you got all kinds of off days in the season. You see him in Beverly Hills walking. You stalk him, right? No. <laughs> LeBron, <laughs> Le- LeBron yeah. is here for one reason. To pass Kareem, Kobe. Pass Kobe and then Kareem. Well, Michael, Kobe, and Kareem. Well, right? that, Skip, that, there those, you go. first of all, yeah. those are no-brainers. Yeah. Kobe's – Yeah. Be like, careful. Yeah, I was if you say. offend Kobe, you're going to bring down hell on your man. What? Offend Kobe how? Mm-hmm. Kobe's already – Kobe played 20 years, got over 33,000 points. LeBron's going to pass him in year 17. Mm. That's not, that ain't no offending no Kobe. Kobe was great. Mm. I got a pair of Kobe shoes. Mm. I might break them out tomorrow. Really? No. They, they, they sacred. LeBron would not like that. Man, look here, man. <laughs> I, I, wear, I wear whatever kind of shoe He's I want. Tight. I wear LeBron shoe. I wear Kobe shoe. I loved him, Jordans. Yeah, as soon as Rich Paul would see it on TV, he'd say, okay, he's off the list. You know, no, nah, no. Nah. You know, Skip, <laughs> I don't know why you think why you think that. Why you why you think that I can't like I'm some LeBron James apologist or president You're on of the, the fan team. club? It's okay. I, I don't know no team. team. To be on. I don't know team. It's a secret club. I think ain't no in. secret club. Are you got sure? a future. You got no. movie roles in your future. No, 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 no. Yeah. Do you, are you gonna get a part in Space Jam? No. What yes. I don't do, what I actually what great. I, no. The thing is, what I won't let, let happen is you come out here and spill bull jive on LeBron. That's what. I, so if I'm, I'm a just president, asking questions. You would have groin or no groin? Skip. It's sore. Huh? I mean, sometimes my vocal cords. I have to drink lemon and hot water. Do you? Really? Yeah. To come out here, I say, but I'm gonna show up. Huh. Yep. I was thinking you were drinking something else. <laughs> oh, <I know. laughs> Not yeah. anymore. Yeah. No, too good. Yeah, yeah, I, I had to get that up, oh, Skip. Yeah. Yeah. I had to give that up. <laughs> Health choice. Yeah. But next year, I'm starting again. <laughs> next okay. year. Well, uh, we'll see about that. Um, John Gruden made another risky move Woo. yesterday. Will yeah. this season be a disaster for the Raiders, or will it work out? We'll discuss next. No mercy. The Raiders signed linebacker Vontez Burfik to a one-year deal yesterday, a day after he was released by the Bengals. But the move comes with little controversy since his new teammate will be Antonio Brown. Burfict was suspended for three games for a vicious helmet-to-helmet hit on AB in the 2015 AFC wildcard game. But both players said they spoke yesterday, and apparently everything is uh, its cool now. So, Shannon, mm-hmm. is Burfict a good fit in Oakland? He's a great fit. Um, Skip, his former D coordinator, uh, Paul Gunther, is True. there now. And it's the Raiders. This is what they do. Well, it used to be what it's they It's still do. what they do, yeah. Skip. It's the Raiders. Uh, but the question is, and Gruden, he likes physical, tough players. The question is, is he going to like? Because let me tell you what's going to happen. Vontaze Burfick is going to get a personal foul. He's going to get a penalty that's going to end up costing the Raiders the football game. Somebody's going to get a field goal. Somebody's going to be able to run out the clock. I've seen that happen. And we're going to see if John Gruden still thinks this is a very good idea. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, John Gruden feels he can change the world. I don't care how bad someone is over there. I can get them with me and blah, yada, yada, yada. You're going to see. Because this is what we know about Vontaze Murphy. Skip, he's an unbelievable talent. But there's a reason why he went undrafted. There's a reason why he's been suspended numerous on numerous occasions. He's flat out dirty. There's no other way around it. And, I, you know, I used to say, well, he's a good enough player. He doesn't have to do that. Yeah, he does, because that's what he does. I don't know what he doesn't have to do. I know what he does do. Yep. And what he does do is every chance <laughs> he gets, if he can put, stick his finger in your eye, if he can twist your ankle, twist your knee, hit you cheap, he's going to do it. This is in his DNA. So good luck, Raiders. That, that uh, pirate, that uh, whatever he is, a raid on the side of your helmet with his mm-hmm. eye, somebody's going to lead the game from the opposing team because Vontez Burfick is going to stick his finger in somebody's eye. He's going to do something. That's what his history says. From college all the way through the NFL, every year he does something. So I don't expect it to change. But mm-hmm. it is a great fit because he's former defensive coordinator. He knows the defense. He's physical. But the old Raiders, he mm-hmm. right up Al Davis. He'll rest his soul. Mark Davis, the son, runs the team now. He's perfect. His dad would have loved him. Mm. I think he's perfect without qualification, <laughs> without prediction of doom and gloom. I think he fits this team to a T. I think he's just what John Gruden needed and wanted. And remember, about an hour after he got cut by Cincinnati, he was a Raider. They jumped all over this. Mm -hmm. Quick story. 1977, I'm just out of college, working here at the LA Times. 
They sent me up to Oakland for a whole week to do a story on the bad boy Raiders who were shattering the mold. It was the baddest group of professional athletes in not just pro football, but in sports history. <laughs> Al Davis was saying, we don't need choir boys. We don't need Boy Scouts. We need football players, mm -hmm. and we don't care about Roger Staubach's. We, we don't care. And that team had, if, if in, they just won the Super Bowl. They were about to play the Rams here in Los Angeles. So I spent a week up there. It's Kenny Stabler. It's Jack Tatum. You remember Jack oh, Tatum? Oh, yeah. Ooh, did he? Lay the wood on. Yeah, he couldn't play one day in yeah. the NFL today. Right. He could not play. Uh, Lester Hayes, Hayes. John Matuzak. Do you remember John Matuzak? I do remember Complete psycho. Okay. Ted Hendricks, I think. Was Ted is the stork. Or and George Atkinson, who was just completely out of his mind, used to call George. me at home and just rant to me about Maybe. crazy stuff. But he could really play. <laughs> Good. The, the whole team could really play. But their motto was, that's when it was born, just win, baby. Yep. Okay. Party hard, hit harder. harder. Okay, You're exactly to right. show up on time Sunday and just win baby mm -hmm. under John Madden, the great coach. Mm -hmm. I'd never seen anything like it. I wrote like 3,000 words on this. Huh. It was it just wrote itself right. because pro sports had never seen anything like that. Yeah. That, that, that was skull and crossbones Raiders. For that real. was Al Davis shattering the mold. Uh -huh. John Gruden coached for Al while Al was still alive. They used to, I used to watch practice. They used to just scream at each yeah. other at the end of practice about how practice had been conducted. John Gruden wants to get back to skull and crossbones. Yeah. And this guy, Vontez Perfect would have been just another guy oh, in perfect. that locker room. Oh, he'd have been right? perfect, yeah. Seriously, he yeah. would have blended in yeah. that locker room. Yeah. So he wants to rebuild, re, sort of reunite the old Raider, you know, reignite it yeah. with Vontez Perfect. I've never well, seen well, it. good. I mean, they were still like that when I got into the league. I came into the league in 1990, and I remember I, my very first game playing was against the Raiders at the old at, at the uh, Coliseum. And I remember walking to the locker room, and I see Greg Townsend, great defensive lineman, yep. sitting on his helmet outside the locker room smoking a cigarette. <laughs> okay. So we go into the game three that, years. That team I covered up. <laughs> I think they all smoke. No, <laughs> we're, seriously. We're, so we're Howie. So fast forward about four about yep. four years later, Skip. We're in the game now. I've gotten to know Greg very well. And I'm I'm lighting them up, C cooking. Not, not lighting up cigarettes. No, no, no. Yeah. I'm like, no. I'm lighting them up. I'm Eddie Anderson, yeah. uh, 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 Lionel Washington, yep. T Mac. I'm cooking. We coming back. I catch a pass like 20 yards. I'm walking back to the hotel. Greg Townsend walks right past me. He said, "Man, I need one of y'all to take Sharp out. Put your elbow in his throat. Mm. Whatever it is, I got it. Mm. I like town, bro. I thought we cool. He said we cool, but you gonna mess around and beat us today." Mm. That was their mentality, Skip. Did they? They beat us. They beat us. Uh, but I beat them. Did they take uh, you out? Oh, I didn't beat them. I beat them. Oh, yeah. I had 13 for like a buck 56 of the tub. Yeah. How would your throat feel after the yeah. game? They get me, though, Skip. No. They tried to. Uh, oh, Wisdom Moss tried to. I figured you'd have a sore throat just from talking. No, no, no. Oh, I was talking. Yeah. Wisdom, <laughs> Moss, Wisdom Moss tried to choke me. Yeah. Yeah, he did. Good. I caught, I caught, like oh, I, I I caught him. I know that feeling. <laughs> <laughs> He, no, no, oh, skip, no, no, skip. God. No, literally. He tried to. Yeah, he okay. literally tried to choke me okay. on the ground. I'm like, rough, y'all. Like, back then, you know, they called no fouls yeah. and stuff like that, skip. You really had to like tell somebody. You, you remember Sean? Well, Sean Jones, uh, uh, the Raiders got into it with the uh, Kansas City Chiefs. He snatched the dude helmet off and was trying to hit him upside the head with it. Yep. So the Raider team I covered in 2002 that got to the Super Bowl yeah. to play Gruden's Tampa team. Tampa. They weren't like this. They did no. have Romanowski, yeah. who was. Yeah. You know, oh, he'd have fit yeah. perfect with that he, team. He would have fit, yeah. But they didn't have this kind of edge to nah, it. No, no, no. Because it was no, no, Tim no, Brown no. and Jerry Rice right. at receiver and Rich Gannon. And they were more of an offensive yeah, team. They were. Uh, those teams, right, th those teams that you're talking about, those were defensive teams. They were. Uh, you know, they had they had Howie, they had Greg Towns. They, they were nasty, man. They, they've always been. And we know, and, and, I, and the hardest thing was is that Mike Shanahan, my coach at Denver, used to say, just maintain your cool. They're going to do something. I'm like, okay, we know they're gonna do something. You just want me to just just take all this, huh? Mm. Uh, but you go, you know, get some easy first down. Mm. Oh, man, that was the hardest. Thing. Hey, mm. it teaches you patience. Yep. Cause you know they're gonna be nasty, but he perfect. But oh, that guy right there, he was born to play in that uniform skill. Yep. And again, will he be cool with AB? Yeah, I yeah. think so. They, they're teammates. Now, I mean, you know, you, you put that aside. Come on. Think about it, Skip. Think about what Rondo and how he felt about Ray Allen joining LeBron James. They didn't even invite him on the, on the reunion tour. Nope. And now, who who is T? They in the backcourt together. Mm. You, you see what happens, Skip? Mm. Mm. And yet, back to the Pittsburgh Steelers, 
How did Juju sort of earn his stripes with the Steelers? He got revenge. Oh, he dropped that hammer yeah. on him. That's the, uh, they call that the Heinz Ward block. Remember, yeah. he got Keith Rivers mm-hmm. and he broke Keith Rivers' jaw. And they outlawed, you know, they ended up suspending Juju for a game mm-hmm. for that play. They did. But they, they out, Heinz Ward caught Keith Rivers with that very play just like that. They called the Heinz Ward rule. And so now you can't crack back. Well, that, that was a long time coming. <laughs> that, that was oh, Juju he was due that. Yeah, I, I'm going to do this for, for history. My right? thing was, Skip, what took everybody so long? Yeah, I know. Yeah. You supposed to, hey, every every team, as nasty as he's been and as cheap and dirty as he's been, yep. every team's supposed to go in the game and take one for the team and try to get him. You know, he is literally straight out of Compton. Yeah. Yep. Now he's straight out of Oakland. Oh, 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 I, oh I, you got you yep. to get him, Skip. You yep. got to send a message. Yep. They're making moves. All Woo. right. How about this, though? Did the Lakers make a huge mistake getting rid of D'Angelo Russell? What a night he had. We'll discuss next. No mercy. D'Angelo Russell and the Nets were down by 25 in the fourth quarter last night to the Kings until Russell went off. He scored 27 of his career high, 44 points in the fourth to lead the Nets to the win. He's having a career year, which is a far cry from when he was the number two overall pick by the Lakers in the 2015 draft. Russell only played two seasons in L.A. before being traded to Brooklyn in a deal that included Brooke Lopez and a draft pick that turned into Kyle Kuzma. So, Shannon, hmm? should the Lakers regret trading him? No. He had to go. Um, I saw D'Angelo Russell play in college, and I saw him with the Lakers, and I never thought for one second Lonzo Ball would be better than him. Hmm. But what in a locker room, having spent a lot of my life, almost half my life, over half my life in locker rooms, I believe, Skip, the two most important things in a locker room is respect and trust. Yeah, maybe trust number one. And he broke that. Yep. Mm. This is what Magic said after they traded D'Angelo Russell. He said, D'Angelo is an excellent player. He has the talent to be an all-star, which he was. We want to thank him for what he did for us. But what I needed was a leader. I needed someone that can also make plays for other, make other players better, but also somebody players wanted to play with. Mm. He had to go, Skip. Now, and people are like, well, he did what he did, but he didn't do what he did in the Nets locker room. He did that in the Lakers locker room. Yep. You can't trade all those other guys just to keep him. So he was the e- that was the easiest solution mm-hmm. was to remove him. Mm-hmm. You can't do what he did, Skip, and remain in that locker room. Had it been years ago, this new millennial generation, they let things slide. But there's no way in hell Mm-mm. he could have been say 15 years ago yep. did that oh they just sent him home they just said he'd have never been able to come back because uh, yeah. he out of look swaggy p for wrong for what he did swaggy p you know everybody say well he broke uh swaggy p and iggy is no swaggy broke them up yeah. the mistake that he made is that he told d'angelo out of what whip. was a very private yeah. conversation. Oh, no. Mm-hmm. What he thought Awful. was a private. Yeah. And he was, you know, he, he videotaped it. And he didn't even put it on social media. Bad. He didn't even show, hey, Swag, I got you, boy. I got you dead to right. Look here. Look I what know. you say. He put it up on social media. It's like inexplicably wrong. 100%. How, how do you? Swag, you swag should have still been whipping him. But Skip, no, he shouldn't feel bad. Skip, I, 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 you, you could tell this guy has this kind of ability. And the thing was, Magic knew he had to trade him because Julius Randle and B.I. and a lot of those same guys were in that locker room mm-hmm. in which he, even though he didn't do it to them, they looking at him like, bro, are you serious? You really did that? You really filmed this man telling you that he w- had was bothering someone else when he's in a relationship and you posted it? Yep. Oh, they, I'm surprised somebody else didn't whip him. But Magic had to do this, Skip. There was no way around it. And in a situation like this, there's only so much a locker room can tolerate, no matter how great the talent is. A.B. is a prime example. Skip, he stretched the locker room as far as it could go, and he started tearing at the fabric of it. Mm-hmm. And the Steelers says no. Yeah. When he did that, mm-hmm. he, it wouldn't stretch. He just busted open. Yeah. And he had to go. Magic had to do this, Skip, even though he's an unbelievable talent. He can score with the best of them. He's that new age point guard, Skip. He's more of a two than a two he's point. More of a two. But Although he can, he's averaging seven assists, which yeah. not bad. When you drop 44 and 12, yeah, we know you can you can handle, you know, you can uh, get others involved. But Skip, 
Magic had to do this for the locker room. Mm -hmm. You can't have regrets because it was never going to be the same okay. with him in there. Okay. Hear that. I also watched a lot of D'Angelo in college. I never saw this in college. I, I didn't see this. He is shocking me <laughs> with the levels that he is reaching. And, and again, to score 27 in a fourth quarter. Well, that's big. There are very few guys that can do that. As much as I love Lonzo, he will never score 27 in a fourth quarter because he'll have a hard time scoring 27 in four quarters. Right. I still believe Lonzo will be the better player long term, but I cannot defend Lonzo here. Right. I still think it's a Luke problem. Right. Is, does that mean Lonzo's going to have to start fresh somewhere else? Maybe. And, and be on his last gasp to prove that yeah. he can be that guy? Mm -hmm. Maybe. Yeah. <sighs> But when I look at the numbers D'Angelo is putting up for a while, this trade, you know, remember, they, they did get Mozgov off the books, books, and it was a big salary. That's what they wanted. So that was a sweet move to clear the path for LeBron. Correct. But when you just look head-to-head -head at Kuzma D'Angelo, for a while it was a joke because Kuzma looked like he was on the verge of becoming star, right. maybe an all-star. Mm -hmm. But this guy just made the all-star team. He has helped elevate the Brooklyn Nets into the, I think they're in the sixth seed. Mm -hmm. It's pretty great for yeah. him, right? For sure. And for sure. when I look at him averaging 21 and 7 assists, and I look at Kuzma, who's slumped lately, he's all the way down. Kuzma is to 30% from the three-point line. Well, I, I remember a lot of his big threes, mm -hmm. the one at Boston. Right. But over time, it starts adding up negatively because he's missing a lot of threes, exactly. too, right? You're right. Because he has, boy, you talk about no conscience. Right. He's just going to jack it up, and he can't back it up sometimes. Right. So now we step back, and i got to ask the question, because LeVar Ball posed it sitting right there, is Magic completely in charge, or is it more Palinka with Magic as the figurehead? I don't know. So I don't want to dump all this on Magic's doorstep if he doesn't deserve it on his doorstep. Well, and plus, Skip, not only did D'Angelo have to go, this, the draft was very heavy in point guards. So Magic had an out. You like Lonzo? Well, he wanted to clear the deck. Yeah, yeah I'm yeah. saying, but, oh, yeah. but, it, because, yeah. but plus, you know, okay, we want to get rid of D-Russ, uh, 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 mm -hmm. but we also get an opportunity. Darren Fox was in this draft. Mm -hmm. So you had Lonzo in this draft. So he had options okay. at the point guard position, which made it even easier okay. to remove him. But just right now, in a vacuum. No, I take D'Angelo or... It's not even close. I'll take... I'm with you. It's starting to look like... Right. Because the trade, look, it looks like, Skip, well, they traded D'Angelo and Mozgov in the first round. Well, the, the pick turned out mm -hmm. to be Kuzma. Yep. But this is really about Lonzo. Mm -hmm. Because basically, you swapped out to get in. You yep. swapped them to Brooklyn, and you drafted. So that's mm -hmm. going to be the comparison. Skip, I don't even, uh, when it's all said and done, no one will remember that the draft pick that the Lakers got from the Nets was Kyle Kuzma. Yeah, They're just going to look at Lonzo and D'Lo. Yeah, you're right. And by the way, D'Angelo is 39th in individual defensive win shares in the league. Right. That, that's really good. Now, Lonzo was up high last year, right. not so much this year. This year's just been a bust for Lonzo, and he's been hurt. Do you believe? Uh -huh. Do you believe Lonzo can ever score twenty points a season, a game in a season? Maybe. I think he could average a triple double. You know why I don't believe he can, Skip? Yeah. Because he can't finish at the rim. He doesn't shoot free throws like this kid. Yeah. Well, you can't make f whatever it is forty-eight percent of your free throws and even last in right. this league. If but but if you guard. see this kid, Skip, this yeah. kid goes to the rack. He's an 80% free throw shooter. Yeah. So, okay, that's great. Now you look at Magic Big Picture. If, in fact, it's Magic's ball game here, I don't know because I'm going to remind everybody his first move when he took over the Lakers, that was February 21st, 2017. What's the first thing he did? He traded away Lou Williams to – that was to Houston. He lasted that year, and then he that was traded in the Chris Paul trade to the Clippers, and now what's happening? That, they, that made no sense. Okay, to me. well, okay. And then – that Zubats trade at the deadline for I think Muscala? That, I think two I think two things. I don't I don't think Magic regrets this one, but I think that Lou Williams yeah. and that Randall and Julius he let, Randall he, he let Julius Randall go yeah, yeah. and he, he let Brooke Lopez go. Did you see Brooke Lopez's numbers last night? Oh, he yeah. was Twenty eight and nine. He made five of 11 threes. Yeah. He he's shooting thirty seven percent from three. He's turned into a seven foot three point shooter. But here's the thing, though, Skip. You could have had you could have had Julius yeah. Randle for one year. Okay. All you had to do I, was tender him. Okay. And guess what? You're at the same spot again this year because now you don't you don't you say you know what? We think we got a chance to get KD or one mm. of these other free agents. Mm. You let Julius Randle go scot free. Mm. So last night Zubats once again had 12 and nine for the Clippers in in just 19 minutes. 
It's pretty great. And Mike you Muscala. Bad, but just don't mention his name. Yeah, it. Mike Muscala is now five of 24 from three in his stint with the Lakers. That's 21%. I don't know. That looks really bad that to me. That one's going to stink. They're not going to forget. Well, they're talking about, well, Muscala comes off the books. He ain't even on the books. <laughs> you shouldn't even have to pay him for what he's doing. I don't know. Oh, that movie. He's been terrible, Skip. He's been terrible. You guys have said it from the beginning. The yes. It didn't make sense. Zoo Boss was my guy, Skip. I told you I like Zoo. Big I said, Zoo. Big Zoo. That's my guy. That was the one bright Big spot yeah. that you Clipper. always talked about. But he's, you, uh, he got traded to the Clippers. Yeah, why you trade him there? Now you gonna see. I now you got to see this man give you a double-double on a nightly basis. Okay, let's talk about the Greek freak. Can he yep. become the next face of the NBA? We're going to discuss his future with Chris Broussard. Let's come on back. No mercy. Well, Giannis Antetokounmpo did not have a dream matchup against LeBron last night since both stars set out, but that doesn't mean they aren't going to be compared to each other. LeBron is arguably the face of the league, but Giannis said yesterday that he doesn't want to be the face of the league if he can't be himself, if people feel he's not American enough. He also added that he never expected to be compared to LeBron in any way. Giannis said, quote, I didn't expect myself to be getting that close Close and tight with LeBron James because he's effing LeBron. Coming into this league, I never saw myself as one of the best players in the league and being that LeBron type of player. That's the truth. I could say, yes, I always thought I could be like LeBron James or better or whatever, but that's not the truth. We're joined by FS1 NBA analyst Chris Broussard. Mm. Good to have you with us, but Shannon, I'll mm. start with you. What do these quotes from Giannis tell you? Well, they tell me, you know what? <laughs> He's ready. <laughs> I've, I've been I can't tell wait us. to hear this. I've been waiting You're for excited. this for very long. What I've learned in, in my years of television is that when you speak for an extended period of time and the tone of your voice starts to raise, mm -hmm. they will say you're going on a rant, even though you're not ranting. So I'm going to be as calm as I possibly can. What this tells me about Giannis is that from the very first moment he got into the league until now, he's always viewed LeBron James as the best player. You heard what he said. He didn't mention anybody else. Now, LeBron James is not the only player that's in the NBA. He's not the only player that's in the NBA when he got in. But he said, to see myself as LeBron and to be compared to a LeBron James type? Hmm. <laughs> He said, I could have told you I could have been a LeBron type. I, I thought oh. this was a Giannis type. Yeah, yeah, he's no, using no, it to no, say LeBron's the GOAT. No, no, this is essentially what you're doing. No, 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 this is essentially what you're doing. This poor man. No, no. This poor listen, kid. Listen to what I'm saying. He comes from Greece and he gets hijacked I, I, by trying, you. Let me <laughs> turn it into what a LeBron. You're to, no, <laughs> I'm saying is that how he oh. views it. Now, this is all, if he finished with these numbers, 27, 12, and 6, if he finished with numbers like that, this will only be the second time in NBA history a player has had 27, 12, and 6. The other, Oscar Robinson, in the year he averaged a triple-double. He's doing it on 58% shooting. So? The, the thing that makes him so unique is that three steps past half court, he's at the rim dunking. Right. He shot 40% from the three-point line in February, so that's getting better. For the longest time, people treated him like they treat LeBron. We're going to build a wall. We're not letting you get to the paint. If you want to hit the three, you want to hit the outside shot, okay, so be it. Now he's making them, he's starting to hit that little out, that little mid-range shot. If he ever get proficient, don't let him shoot 35%. Don't let him shoot 38% from, from the three. It's over. He's mm -hmm. developing it. Too. Because you can't, with, with that Euro step and the, the amount of ground he can cover, mm. and he's, he's improved his free throw percent mm. shooting. Skip, this dude is, he, he's, he's special. And, but it just goes to show you in his mind what he, how he views LeBron as the GOAT. He, he didn't say he was the GOAT. He <laughs> I said, said how he, I said, how he I viewed did, I missed I'm that. A, I'm going to take it a step further. Look, we forget this because last year LeBron was still the best player in the world. Right. This year, even though their team's not well, he averaged 27, 8, and 8. He's still a great player. We, that makes us forget Giannis and LeBron are really not contemporaries. No. Giannis is 10 years younger than LeBron. Like 24. When Le, right. When LeBron first led the Cavs to the finals in 07 and arguably became the best player in the world, Giannis was 12. <laughs> so he was yeah. not growing up thinking 
I'm going to compete against LeBron. It's like when I grew up oh, with Isaiah the Thomas, sweep, the legend. Right? He didn't see the Spurs sweep LeBron. Right? Man, go well, ahead. Well, he was just paying attention to this wonder kid, right. this 22 year old okay. kid okay. leading this team to the finals over the bad boys in Detroit, the mm -hmm. second bad boys. Yeah. Uh, so my point is, he grew up thinking like he's my idol. Right. You know, I, I'm not thinking about competing against him or being as good as him. He's like on another level. And then the second thing is, He's from Greece. There's, I don't believe there's ever been another all-star player from Greece. Kosta Koufis, who's not even from Greece, but he's Greek. Is he the best player other than Giannis from Greece? Remember uh, in 2003, same draft as LeBron. Sophocles. Sora Knight, I don't even know no, how to say his I last name. Yeah. He was baby Shaq. Mm -hmm. He got drafted by the Clippers in the second round. Now, he was dominant in Greece. He was baby Shaq. Yeah. So Giannis <laughs> is growing up thinking... This dude's the man. Right. He gets to the NBA and he's nothing. He never even played a game in the NBA. He was nothing. Mm -hmm. And so Giannis, there's no way coming from Greece he ever thought, I'm going to be as good as LeBron James. I'm going to be the best player in the world. He's just thinking he probably just wants to make the NBA. You know what so that's what, I, that's what I this that. told me. Before you, before you go, Skip, you know who this reminds you of? Kobe and Jordan. But Kobe, at least, I mean, Kobe. But think about it. Was Kobe, much Kobe, and, Kobe came in in '96. Jordan got that's 12 years yeah, different. Yeah, in that regard, yes. I mean, there's there's such a big. So Kobe never could be. The only thing is, LeBron is having such an extended career and prime. Right. That like Jordan didn't even play 16 years. So typically, Le, in in his historically, a guy like LeBron would pretty much be retired now. Yeah. Okay. While Giannis is reaching, it, coming into his own. But Kobe knew a whole lot more about Jordan than Giannis. Yeah, yeah than I about think LeBron. in that regard, yeah, but, yeah, because you just both, mean age -wise. Right, right. But they're right. both. Jordan is American. Kobe's American. But Giannis is in Greece, so he's only seeing it, Clippers. It's it, not like, it makes the the myth of LeBron right, even bigger. Correct. When you're in Greece, so, even bigger. Right? Bigger yeah. mythology. You know about mythology, Speaking right? of mythology, yes, you just uttered a bunch. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I got this same story. Isn't this what the same you, story? What are you I, saying I got the same about? one. Same quote. So here's the quote I read. This okay. is from Giannis, and this very story that you're referring yes. to. Yes. LeBron was one of my role models. He's one of the guys I looked up to in the NBA. Okay. He's one of the best players in the league. He, he didn't even call him the best player in the yeah. league. So, that, that so can we read. I just, just point of clarification? <laughs> I, I don't know. Maybe I... I just read what you... I just read... I just reverb, oh, know, oh, okay. okay. Guys, I'm just taking okay. the best that, that's, that's it. Okay, Skip has so a we put read. that to bed. Okay. So can, <laughs> you ain't put it to bed. Uh, it's wide awake. <laughs> <laughs> now we can go to the Giannis topic. The quote that got me is, is the reason I can't buy completely in as you have and you're about to be. And it's the quote, coming into the league, I never saw myself as one of the best players in the league and being that LeBron type of player. I don't think he still thinks that. Like he still is like, do I really belong here? Do I fit? And then all the quotes about, am I American enough to be the face of the NBA in America? Well, it's hard. It's yeah. hard to break through as that guy. But, but trust me. There have been players who came along who said, I can do, like Manu Ginobili, when he stepped on the NBA floor, he said, I can be the best player in this league. That's what he thought. Now, whether you think he ever even got close to that. He didn't. Okay. Well, no, not the best. Okay, but, but that's, that was his mentality. He was fearless from the start. He was shattering the mold of the way Popovich coached. Popovich finally said, I had to back off and quit coaching him because right. he's going to try things every night I don't buy, yeah. I don't believe in, right. and about half of them really work. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they wind up in the seventh row, yeah. right? <laughs> right? But, but he didn't care. Right. Giannis really cares about how he's perceived. Right. He's sensitive. He has a softer side to him. He has a playful side. And I need to see, and I know this is harsh, but I need to see a little more of that killer. If you're going to be that guy – to take this league over, and he has the potential, he has the capability of it. I need to see more. I got this. This I own this game. I own this well, league. What he did against Ben Simmons on yeah, that yeah, dunk, yeah. and then called him and a baby. You want to see more of that? And I do too. I, I still yeah, yeah. don't. I still do not believe that a foreigner can be the face of an NBA or the face of MLB because we've seen it. Ichiro was a much better player than Derek Jeter. He wasn't the face of MLB. It's just, just a quick point of order, because I thought about this. 
I'm, I'm going back a little before you. Okay. But in the 60s, when I was a hardcore baseball fan, because it was really all there was right. to be a fan of. Clemente. Listen, Roberto Clemente was real close to being yes. the face of baseball. I was in awe. I, if, if I had a chance, because we couldn't see all the games, right. if I saw Roberto Clemente Pirates game, I'm going to watch because right. he's going to yeah. light it up. He, he's going to make a play in what, right field or a what, throw. Or, was he bigger than Hank? It was cl- – he was at least – it was yeah. like this. Because you still had I, Hank. I got it. I got really it. Really made I, I, I think I a lot of African-Americans w- who were really into yeah. baseball at that time kind of view him like he was black. Yeah. I mean, which he, yeah. he well, is, but right, he's, right. you know, he but, was, uh, but like he wasn't a, American, a black right, American. Right. Got it. Right. Agreed. Because my dad would always hey, talk about him hey, like that. Hey, Juan Marichal yeah. in those days, right. was, as a pitcher, yeah. he was like a dominating force. Yeah. Where you're just – because he had that big kick wind up. It, it's just – because here's the thing, Skip. Let's look at Dirk. Okay. Dirk is Dirk's been great. He is wildly but Dirk, popular. But Dirk yeah. has never been the face of the, no. Here here's the thing. First of all, with baseball nowadays, there there is the language barrier. Even yeah. though the guys may speak English, it's not that well. Right. The NBA players that are foreign tend to speak better English. Right. And here's the, cuz I feel you on the international player, can they be the face of the league? And I actually said I don't think Giannis last week probably has enough American swag. But in 5 years and I don't want to discount Anthony Davis. Mm-hmm. Maybe Zion. We'll see what he becomes. Mm. Ben Simmons, whatever. But it's possible in five years, the four, three or four best players in the world could be international. Giannis, Embiid. Joel Embiid, Luka Doncic, and Nikola Jokic. Wow. Now, if that's very possible. Yeah. Two of the top five, two of the first team All-NBA this year, either Jokic or Embiid at center, and Giannis are going to be international. Mm. Now, if I had to pick of those four, who could be the face of the league? Obviously, MB with his char- charisma and yep. all that. that. And I'd say Luca would be second. Like, I could see MB and Luca being the faces of the league because Luca, a dominant white player who got, he got, he got swag, swag and he got attitude yeah. and he's going at these brothers. Yeah. That, he's almost like a, I think he's like a new age Larry Bird. Yep. And I think those well, two. He's got that in him, but go ahead. He's a bad oh, boy, though. Bad. We'll see. But you, you know been what? He's missing a bunch of late game free throws. <laughs> Your point about Giannis, mm-hmm. and I love Giannis. I said I it at the beginning of the year. You've I think he's the best player in the East. He, we're going to find out in the playoffs. Yes. Because I used to think, with all due respect to the great Tracy McGrady, Tracy McGrady, he didn't he, – he put up huge numbers in the playoffs, but he just never could win. Mm-hmm. Right. And because of that, you couldn't be like a Kobe or something like that because you have to win in the playoffs. So we're going to – this is when you become the best player in the world. But I, what I loved about this kid here is that you watch him, you watch what he's done to his body. He realized the way he was built was not conducive yep. for doing what he needed to do. He looks like a – he looks like a freak now. Right. From where he came, like 190 to like 245, he 250, he grown man. But but they but the real big grown man, old, old, old Papa. That boy got old Papa straight out here in LA. <laughs> He's still basket. You know what he do to him. Mm. You know what he do. <laughs> but I like Giannis. What, what, what game did I watch on that Friday night here at Staples? Oh, uh, LeBron, LeBron cooked him. Giannis oh, had 16 points. Oh, remember he, he wasn't even supposed to play in the game. He had a knee issue. Do you Why remember that? See, see, you Who go. won that game? I they, can't remember. But I didn't, I didn't know Brogdon was going to do all the stuff that he was doing. You saw what happened, 15-2 run. Oh, Bledsoe. That's a big loss for them, too. That hurt. Brogdon. Yeah. yeah. That yeah, yeah, could yeah. determine the East. But I agree with you. The pressure mounts on Giannis to back it up when it matters the most. You, you know what? You, you see, I see. You see what he did, Chris. He went and tried to dig some notes out. Let me find this. He said he wanted a bear. He wanted it. He did bear. He did say those things. <laughs> you want me to run <laughs> by the quotes there. with you every day, <laughs> <laughs> to make the sure I'm covering quotes, everything? The only, right, the only thing that's trans- shot your the, argument. The only thing that's happened right now is LeBron is not universally. Regarded oh. as the best player. Oh, really? But, no, right now, yeah. <laughs> I don't think he's got that title anymore. No. Uh, I think Mario Hazonia has that title now. What? Oh. <laughs> but, hey, it's know. open. <laughs> he'll ha- he'll be a chance to fight for it next year. Oh yeah. Oh, oh he whoever did t- these playoffs are going to determine yeah. for the I think time you're being. Right, though. With Who's that, with the, the playoffs. So like, Giannis, yeah, it's, it's, we will see a star or we won't. Either It's how he performs. I mean, those are the moments where everyone's He doesn't have to win it watching. or even get to the finals. If he kills and they get to the third round, the conference finals, mm-hmm. 
that he may be viewed as the yeah. best player in the world. By the way, one other face of the league, foreign, was Steve Nash, who was Canadian, and it yeah, didn't right. fe he didn't feel he's like from Santa Clara. Yeah. Yeah. Well, right. I mean, he, he went he went to Santa Clara. Right. He's from Vancouver, so it's close to. It's just, I don't right. think. But do you think he's no, he 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 ever the face of the league though? Close. Well, he won two MVPs, yeah, but, yeah, it, but, but but he was, everybody he, thought they were false because they thought the first year Shaq should have won it. The first or second? The first, first year. The and first then, year. Yeah, I, I voted for Nash twice. I did vote okay. for him twice. Mm -hmm. But I don't think he was ever the face of the league. I, I bet at least he was maybe in the discussion. Because that, that was Kobe. Giannis could be the best player, but yeah. like a Tim Duncan. Okay. But maybe, I, look, I want him to be himself, oh, though. Don't, oh, don't go out. I liked what he said. Nash was in the league. Was LeBron in the league then? Yeah, but oh. this was 04 and 05 when, when he won yeah. the MVPs. Co what about Wasn't Kobe? It? Yeah, well. Yeah, I don't think that. I think Kobe and Shaq were probably the face of the league. Okay. In 04 and 05. And then around, and then like around five, six, another kid. Probably like seven. Seven. Yeah. He, seven when he got swept. No, dude, that's kid. You know what? You ruined when all of He got this. swept. But Duncan, you know what? There was a transfer. Like Duncan said to LeBron after that. Well, he series, did after he was in the way. belong to you. Yeah, Just like LeBron yeah. said to Giannis, mm -hmm. I love everything oh, about you. Setting the stage. There's a transfer. Oh, that, okay. The all big right. genie. Here he is the, the latest, down. guys. Draymond Green, uh, he's got something to say a lot of the times, and now apparently he doesn't care if Kevin Durant uh. leaves Golden State. We'll discuss all of that next. No mercy. And Draymond Green is at it again regarding Kevin Durant. If you remember, the two had a very public argument on the bench back in November. There's speculation that KD is going to leave Golden State, but according to Draymond, the situation between the two is not important. Draymond said about KD, quote, he's part of it right now. Whatever happens this summer happens. Whatever the hell he do, he does. If he go, he go. If he stay, he stay. But while he's here, we're going to win another championship. It's just that simple. Nothing else matters. All right, we're joined once again by Chris Broussard. But first, Shannon, what do you read into those words? I think Draymond is resigned to the fact that K KD is, is bouncing after the season. But for me, I would not even drudge that back up. If he stays, he stays. If he goes, he goes. I would just leave that alone. I'm not worried about what KD does this summer. All I'm concerned about now is the next two months of this season. Because it seems like, you're like, well, what? I don't care. Right. If he goes, he goes. He stays, he stays. I'm talking about right now. What KD and I have tried to do is try to put that moment behind us. We're focused on right now. And that's all I care to talk about. I'm not talking about what KD may or may not do. That's for KD to decide. But in the meantime, our job is to try to get better, go into these playoffs with some momentum, and go ahead and win four titles in five years so we'll go down as one of the all-time great franchises, teams in NBA history. I'm not concerned about what KD. It just seems, and KD, I don't know how KD's going to take it. KD does have some thin skin. He might be, oh, oh, it doesn't matter if he go, he stays. Oh, it doesn't matter to you, huh? Okay. I, 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 look, Draymond is not the one to soft pedal anything. And, and he said this like, look, if he go, he go. If he stays, say, he, yeah. if he stays, he go. Stay. It sounded worse stay, when I right. said it. Yeah. If he go, he go. If he stay, he stay. <laughs> yeah. That's what he said. I hear you. But I'm going to be honest, and I've been told that they've moved past it. I don't know what their relationship is like. Obviously, it's cordial and it's fine. Right. Are they as close as they used to be? Probably no, not, but I don't, I don't know. But I like it. I like what Draymond said, and I think this is their attitude. Like I, like you said, Shannon, everybody in the league thinks KD is gone. Mm -hmm. Now, we don't know for sure, but I think the people in Golden State feel like he's probably he's out of here. Now, if he stays, we'd love it. Love it. But if he goes, he goes. And this, what I like about it is this is now, this locker room can get galvanized behind the rallying cry of one last hurrah. Mm -hmm. That's it. Look, let look, let's go out with a bang. This is the last time that arguably the most talented NBA team ever will be together. Let's go out with a bang and win it. I guess you can argue that could backfire if they don't have that camaraderie, but I think it's bad news for the rest of the league because I think they're saying we got two months left together, three months, whatever. We gonna win a championship, mm. and that's all that matters. And I think it's very good news for the rest of the West, including my San Antonio Spurs. <laughs> I did not like the way he said any of this. <laughs> and the first thing I want to hear, I want to hear from Kevin Durant that this is all behind I them and in the past you. and that they're over it. For Draymond well, to say it, well, he, he said, remember what he said now? He said, don't ask him no more about Draymond. Correct. He said, don't ask him no right, more. Because right. remember, <laughs> 
Draymond initiated. Yeah. Draymond called him the B word. He didn't call Draymond the right. B word. So, so whatever fence need to get mended, it needs to go needs through the Do building. you think right. they can't move past that word? Because Draymond called LeBron that, as we know in the finals, <laughs> and they're cool. Now he's a clutch. Guy. Right. Yeah. They're cool. So yeah. I think LeBron they can move forgive. Past. LeBron got to yeah, forgive. But LeBron is keep he is a close and enemies closer. Right. That's no, what he does. Not. That's what he He'll does every hard. off season. How could LeBron forgive him for that? I don't know. How can he become <laughs> he a He forgave player? Dan Gilbert. If you forgive <laughs> Dan Gilbert, you forgive anybody. <laughs> the man who accused you of quitting? Yikes, yeah. Really? Call okay. you selfless and yeah, self-anointed right. king. Yeah, self-anointed king. So these king. are forgiving wow. hearts. Yeah, he forgives. Self-anointed like king? Christian heart. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, LeBron and I are so different. I don't different know about that. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that. So think about these quotes. They were so dismissive of, of Kevin's future. Instead, you, you should preface it. Again, you're speaking to the media, so this is for everyone to hear, for the world to hear. You need to say, boy, I hope he stays. You need to preface it with something yes. like that. And it was, whatever the hell he do, he does. <laughs> whatever the hell. Whatever the hell. Well, like... Screw him. Get him out of here. You know, what, well, whatever. It's not right. that bad. Well, okay, but, but it comes, I get where you're it, coming that, from. That's the tone of it was like that. Does Draymond just lay it on the line? Whatever it is, it's, yep. it's unvarnished. He just <laughs> says, this is it. Okay, do we res we like that about? It? Yes, we do. <laughs> but if I'm Kevin Durant, I don't I don't love the tone of that. I don't think I don't think Golden State like the tone of it either. F from you, from Draymond. But Draymond. I think they probably know. To, I think they all. If I'm Draymond, said, look at man. It, hey, all I know is Golden State's gonna offer him the bag, and I would be willing. I'll Draymond. Say, Draymond, they're gonna offer KD the bag. Yeah. That's, okay. And whatever KD does, I'm not mentioning he goes, he stays. I'm not mentioning any of that. That's going to be KD's decision to, to hash out in three months from now. Mm -hmm. But right now, we got a title to win. Man, you're talking about, oh, so you trying to say. I don't think, I think this is good. I, I think this is, this is the attitude they need to have. One last hurrah. Oh, I, sure ho I hope, you know what, just please get San Antonio in that first round mm. Golden State. Because yeah. I want this thing to be quick. Mm -hmm. Quick and painless. Yeah. Don't nobody hurt. Don't nobody bleed out of nothing. It, it like, might be the other way around. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They might just fall completely you apart. You actually right think they could yeah, lose to the Spurs? No. I need to see how it shapes up. Yeah, I know how it's going to shape yeah, up. I need to see. <laughs> they're, they're, they're better than the Spurs, but the Spurs laid you know, it on them the other day. I tell night. you what, you know what? Y'all would have a great yeah. chance. If y'all yeah. had a 28 year old Duncan, mm -hmm. I'd give y'all a real, real <laughs> shot. But he ain't 28 anymore. Mm. I'll take Ginobili at 28. Here's the thing, too. Look, Golden State is not going to fall off the map when KD leaves. They still could win it next year. Okay. And that may be why he needs to leave. Because okay. he's arguably the best player in the world, and they may not even need you. But I mean, really. As long as Clay stays. It, you know, well, yeah. yeah. It, Clay's going to get max. So, yeah. Clay, right. the, all of them. Look, for Draymond, if KD were to stay, Draymond becomes the guy, the odd man, man out financially. Yeah. Yeah. If, if KD leaves, Draymond probably has to get overpaid. Okay. Just because he's in, so important to that team. Well, right now, he's not worth overpaying because he, his numbers have slipped across the yeah. board. He's no having doubt. a hard time. He's now 7-7-7. Seven, seven, and seven. The seven assists are still good, but the, the points and rebounds are down. Right. And he is shooting a grand total of 27% from the three-point line. And now people just dare him. He made one the other night, and I was like, but wow, he made question. one. KD's first year in Golden State. If he's not there, do you believe Golden State beat? Cavs? I think we got a heck of a rivalry. I, and I, I would, if I had to pick between that Cavs team and Golden State without KD, I would pick Golden State in a probably a seven-game series because they hmm. were, would be feeling like we gave it away last year. We should have won last year. We didn't because Draymond was out. They would have came back with a vengeance. So I would have picked them in a close series. Kyrie and Kevin Love? Yes. That no, team? Sir. No, yeah. sir. No, sir. I, I give Cleveland. I, I That's agreed. fine, but I'm telling you, I, I would have picked Golden State. I think it would have been close. Them shots, them shots that KD was making. Well, haven't we talked about this? If you're on the playground and you're choosing yep. up. Yep. But that, basketball, you, you that's got LeBron and that's Kyrie. Went, but that's not basketball. Is about chemistry. The numbers all show that the Warriors are arguably better not without in the playoff. KD. Not in the playoffs. They not one. They won the final. They won the championship without him. Yeah, they did. Well, minus Kyrie and minus. But Kevin just Love. like I don't hold it against LeBron in 2015 that Draymond got suspended, I don't hold it against the Warriors that well, Ky, Kyrie all, and KD. Well, and somebody, Love. somebody boarded that business Boeing jet and went to the Hamptons to recruit KD. 
But if I don't need is you... That, is something wrong with that? No, I'm not I saying... I mean, LeBron recruits everybody, I'm too, not, so. I'm not saying anything is wrong with it, Chris. Oh. I'm just saying they knew what was on the horizon. Hmm. You know what... We don't, we'll never know. That's what I'm saying. We'll never know. All I'm saying is, what, look, and, and Draymond and the Warriors know it. Next year, if KD's gone, they're going to come out with a, an extra fire to prove to everybody. They and will. Steph, we talk about who's the face of the league... Steph had taken it periodically from LeBron. As, as much as I love LeBron, Steph had taken it from LeBron for a year. I agree. Year and a half. Six months. And then when KD came, you know, you, mm, he didn't. Months. He wasn't it. But Steph could regain face of the league mm. next yeah, year. Yeah, he had it for six months. Mm. All right, all right, Chris. After that first he had time. It, though. He had it, He had it for he six had months. It, though. But LeBron, That's LeBron said, I don't, I don't want it right now. I need to go back into the lab and focus. Mm. The lab. Now he's in a lab. Okay. Chris, thank you as <laughs> always. Interesting today. So, guess what we have coming up? Super Bowl champ and Ravens oh, legend. Here we go. Suggs, he joins <laughs> us <laughs> next. We'll be right back with him. No mercy. Our next guest played 16 years with the Baltimore Ravens. He's a seven-time Pro Bowler and a Super Bowl champ. Now he's headed to the desert after signing with the Cardinals last week. Darrell Suggs, welcome to Undisputed. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Ball so hard. You're back. I have missed you. Have you missed me? Absolutely. I've missed you, Skip. Yeah. Believe it or not, I have. I got to miss you. That's so nice of you I've to been say seeing you talking top. crazy, though. <laughs> crazy. Just a little bit. All right. Well, we are glad to have you. I'm going to start with the obvious question. How hard was it to leave Baltimore? It was very difficult. It was probably hands down the most uh, difficult decision I've had to make in my life. You know what I'm saying? But... At the end of the day, I just, I just felt it was time to leave. You know what I'm saying? You, you said it was time to leave. So when I look at you, I look at you as like this, the Ray Lewis, 17 years, Jonathan Ogden. I think Ed Reed made a mistake, and I think if he had to do it over again, he would have never left. I just saw you as always as a lifer in that black and purple. Why now? Me too, because um, like you mentioned, all those guys, you know, um, through and through, I'm an Ozzie Newsom guy. Right. And, you know, once I, I, I knew Ozzy was going to step down as GM, you know, I had to kind of question my future, you know, in the Ravens uniform. And, you know, uh, after trying a few times, like, you know, last year trying to kind of extend uh, my my contract with the Ravens and, and everything just kind of kept falling through, I was just like, all right, it's probably, you know, Ozzy stepping down. I'm kind of the last pillar from the last regime. And it just, it, like I said, like with a, with a lot of things that kind of happen, a lot of guys that end up leaving, I felt like I was the only thing preventing the team from kind of, you know, out with the old, in with the new, you know, kind of thing. So I kind of, I, I, I chose to leave so that they can kind of turn the page and, and let the new guys kind of build something for they, for themselves and, you know, have some of their own. So you, so you've, do you feel that had Ozzy still been in place, that you would have remained a Raven? You felt that Ozzy had that big of an impact that you would have remained a Raven had he remained in his role? Um, it's, it's a good chance that, you know, I, I would have probably stayed and, and finished out my career in Baltimore had Ozzy still been, you know, remained there. But, you know, it just seems like, you know, with, his, with him stepping down and the moves that they made, it was kind of like, I feel like it was a mutual part in the way, ways. Um, you know, like I said, you know, they were kind of turning the page. And, and, you know, I had to respect that. You know, I love that organization so much that I removed myself from it so that they can, uh, you know, do what they had to do and, and be, and be a, a great team again. So, Mr. Suggs, you and I used to do battle about one Joe Flacco. I called him Fluco. You yeah. called him Joe Cool. He was oh, your man. quarterback. The disrespect. Yeah. But how do you feel now that how the Ravens. How can you Ravens, say that about a Super Bowl? Yeah, yeah the Ravens <laughs> A Super Bowl winning him MVP. Because they traded him. They have committed their future to one Lamar Jackson. How do you feel about that? Like I said, you know, um, it was it was kind of a, a turn another page, so to say. You know, it was Lamar time. You know, Lamar, um, Joe did some great things for us last year, you know, and uh, played a few games hurt. And, you know, Lamar came in and, and gave us that spark and kind of 
took the team and, and got us into the playoffs. You know what I'm saying? So it was a uh, – it, it, it was just time, you know what I'm saying? I don't think it was a disrespectful thing. It was just, you know, the team went in a dif- different direction, and it, it's Lamar's time there. Can the Ravens win Super Bowls with Lamar Jackson at quarterback? Um, they can, hopefully. Not while I'm still playing, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because I'm not on, it. <laughs> <'Cause> I'm on, <laughs> I'm not on their team, but I, I believe they can, you know. And now that you're not in that division – the new favorites mm-hmm. of the Cleveland Browns. How do you feel about that? I know. That's a whirlwind, man. Uh, you know, the Cleveland, you know, that, that city has been dealing with a lot, especially with the departure of their team to Baltimore, you know, back in 1996. Yeah. And, you know, they've, they've had some pain. So now, like, you know, they've made some moves to kind of put them in a position to do something special. So, you know, um, it's exciting. The whole, you know, the whole league will be looking – at uh, Cleveland, Ohio. Mm. So it's other than Arizona being your hometown, you went to college, you played college ball there, you played high school there. Why mm. with the Cardinals? Do you believe that they can win? Um, probably going to uh, select a quarterback, Kyler Murray, with the first pick in the draft. Do you guys believe you can win, compete in this division with the Rams who went to the Super Bowl last that, year in this very division? And Seattle. Absolutely, absolutely. I, I, absolutely, I believe that. Um I didn't come here to not win. You know, I don't have any seasons to kind of waste. You know, I don't know how much longer I plan on doing this, but I know I plan on playing it next year. And and I don't I, – I didn't come to the Arizona Cardinals to have the number one pick in the draft again in the 2020 draft and, and be in, a, in the lottery in the 2020 – I mean, in, in 2020. So I definitely think we can win. And – um we got all off season to kind of be build a team and become a team. Have you had much time to watch Kyler Murray? I don't know if you got to see any of his games last year. Do you know what you're yeah. about to get into here with him? Because he is something. I mean, uh, we we we've been around this game for for decades. You know, y'all been around this game longer than me. Y'all know crazy things can happen on draft day, so we don't know who we're gonna get. You know what I'm saying? So, but if they do happen to draft Kyler, I mean. Um, Tyler Murray, um, I think it's is is gonna be it's gonna be exciting, just like the same situation with Lamar. You know what I'm saying? And um it all depends on how good he can, you know, handle the the NFL scheme and, and become an NFL quarterback, how fast he can pick that up. Mm. Have you had time to sit down with your new, very young head coach? Uh yeah, we we've chatted when I when I signed, we talked to a little bit and you know everybody's just really excited that's the kind of you know uh energy you need going into a season you know you have the 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 excitement of a a new young head coach you know me and him was actually in the same draft that was crazy (laughs) someone told me that and uh you know and uh you know like i said with with me being a a 17-year vet coming into kind of a young team i think it's a good uh situation for everybody involved Mm -hmm. so if you don't mind i'd like to revisit this you're very yeah. close with Ray. Did you run this by when you yeah. made this decision? Not that you have to, but did you? And if the Ravens had come to you and said, Suggs, just give us an opportunity to match whatever Arizona is putting on the table. Because it seems to me that you were resigned, that you were leaving regardless whether they ask you to come back or not. That's not true. That's not true. Um, I actually decided before, you know, like I, I, I hadn't slept in weeks. And, you okay. know, it was like I was pretty much – gonna go back to Baltimore because that was the safe thing to do but you know at the end of the day I wasn't at peace with my decision and um I was going to ask Ray but then I'd have been taking counsel from someone other than myself right you know what I'm saying and I kind of wanted to do what was the best fit for me and it just seemed like after you know after thinking everything through it was like the best decision and I even Ozzy even called me you know and he was on the phone we couldn't get off the phone for hours and I'll never forget it Ozzy said says I don't want to hang up the phone because I don't want to lose you you know what I'm saying he he said I feel if I get off the phone then I'm gonna lose you I like Ozzy you can never lose me I'll always be a raven you know but I, I felt it's time to turn the page and and that's, that's what I did. That was the biggest decision that, and me leaving. So that non-extension really rubbed you the wrong way because you felt if they'd have wanted you in 2019, they would have extended you in 2018. Um, 
it didn't rub me the right way. You know what I'm saying? Like when you're young, you're naive and, and you, you react to things prematurely. It was mm-hmm. just like, nah, you know, I kind of respected the business side of it. I think, you know, now that you can see how everything kind of panned out, mm-hmm. um, they were thinking more offensively and there was a, a big offensive free agent on, you know, on the block that everybody was trying to get. And I really think they really wanted that guy, you know, and I respect that, you know what I'm saying? He's a, he, he was a, going to be a, he's going to be a big, you know, piece for the Jets. And I just think, you know, had, you know, we got the extension done, like I said, I, I would still be there, but it was just kind of let me know it's probably time to turn the page. Hmm. Going back to your old division, the North, you surprised that Antonio Brown and Le'Veon are no longer Pittsburgh Steelers? Um, nah. <laughs> As we clearly see, just like during this, <laughs> we clearly see during this interview, all good things must come to an end. You know, uh, time, time, uh, time will get us all eventually, so I'm not surprised. So where do you see the Steelers finishing in that division next year? I could really care less. <laughs> really? Um, I could care less when... <laughs> I could care less when I was in that division, you know, uh, but who cares? I'll be chilling for the black and purple, though. <laughs> so let me ask you, who do you, you know, when Ray left, he turned it over to you. Who do you turn the defense over to? Mm-hmm. Who do you turn the locker room leadership? C.J. Mosley's gone. So the last of really the homegrown yeah. uh, definite defensive stars is no longer in that locker room. So who's in charge? Um, Brandon Williams, uh, we left the defense in good hands. You okay. know, Brandon Williams, you know, was a Pro Bowl defensive tackle last year. He's always played at a very high level. Um, Jimmy. the juggernaut, Michael Pierce, okay. you know, he's one of the, in, the toughest interior guys in, in, uh, in the league. Jimmy Smith, like you said, he's still there. He was part of our Super Bowl team. Um, Tony Jefferson, he's a, he's a veteran guy. Um, but, you know, one of my personal favorites is Matt Judon that, you know, I think, you know, he's really going to shock some people, you know, in uh, next season. And I think he's going to have a good season. So the, the defense is in good hands. So you had some great battles over the years with one Tom Brady up in Foxborough. How shocked are you that he's still going at age next year, 42, at a high level? Well, the way the game's played now, the way the, the rules change, is, you know, I'll probably be able to sneak it out until I'm 40. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's not the same game from where... You know, I'm saying when I came in and, and when Shannon played, you know, you know what I'm saying? It's almost two hand touch now, but hey, we'll we'll play nice. We'll we'll play long. So it's it's not it's not shocking at all. The rules ain't the same. You know what I mean? The game isn't the same. They have more protection than than anybody, you know, quarterbacks in this league. So it's it's not very shocking at all. So have you gained respect for Brady at all? Uh what what you got? Five rings? Six rings? Six. six. You got as many as Mike? Six? Mm-hmm. That's, as many as Mike. What can I say to that? And three more than you LeBron. Know what I'm <laughs> Thank you, Skip. <laughs> you see, they try to sneak hey, that hate in on hey, LeBron. Blasphemy subs. against the king is treason. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Blasphemy <laughs> against the king is treason. Stop <laughs> that, that, Skip. <laughs> Stop <laughs> that. Yeah. So we gonna we gonna keep it we gonna keep it fun. Don't be blaspheming against the king. But um, yeah, he got six rings. Good for him. Yeah. Mm. So you are the CEO of your own film production company. And by the way, speaking of LeBron, you, you were doing LeBron off the field, off the court, long before LeBron was going Hollywood. So h- how is that going, and what do you have coming up for us film-wise? Well, you know, i got some stuff in the can. I mean, you know, just um, in pre-production, you know what I'm saying? I still, my heart belongs in football, you know what I'm saying? So I kind of do, uh, you know, film as just as fun. You know, I, I just I shot a, a TV pilot, you know, that's called Shade. So I'm gonna, hopefully I could be able to show that to the world once I finish it. And, you know, I got a couple of feature films, feature scripts, you know what I'm saying, that I'm going to try to shoot, get shot. But, you know, all that's going to be fun for the summer, you know, right now. Right now I'm just kind of focusing on working out and, and being the best player I can be in 2019 for the Arizona Cardinals. Hey, Suggs, don't forget your boy do a little acting on the side. So if you ever need somebody to do a little role. That. Boy, I hey. know that absolutely. Since when? All right, but I'm Jenny, cheap stop. though. Huh? I, don't, I don't pay people. You know whoa, what I'm saying? Whoa. So you're gonna have to, me and you. You know, what I mean, I, you're gonna have to get me some kind of deal. You know, what uh-huh. what I'm saying I'm gonna hook you up on the back end uh-huh. or something. Okay, yeah. we can do you know that. But I'm, I'm real cheap, bro. But so let me tell you how this thing works. 
my talent isn't based on your budget. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm good at this thing now. But you, I'll do you this solid. I know you are. I know you okay. are. Okay. We all, right, all tune you. in to watch you, not skip. <laughs> uh, so. uh, you want that's to not true. Appreciate that, son. Yeah, that's we, what I'm talking about, son. That's true. Boy. He tunes in just to watch me. I know, and he knows. Just throw that in there yep. at the very end. Terrell, Absolutely thank not. you. <laughs> Appreciate your time today. We're wishing you the best of luck in Arizona. Thank you for joining us. No mercy. Alabama's Pro Day had a very familiar face yesterday. Bill Belichick was on hand, and he happened to be wearing an Alabama pullover. Yep. There is a connection yep. since Nick Saban was Belichick's defensive coordinator in Cleveland back in the 90s. The two are the best of the best, with each winning six championships as head coaches. Shannon, mm. you are a big fan of both these guys. Yes, mm. I am. So the question is, who is the better coach, Belichick or St. Nick? Mm. Greatness kind of gravitate towards greatness. Mm. That, that what I heard. I mm. really oh, you, you love Tom that? Brady. <laughs> that, 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 stop. This wasn't easy. It's really not as easy as people think it is. But I went Coach Saban for the simple fact of the constant turnover, and he hasn't had that one stabilizing great player like Coach Belichick has. Now, I do give Coach Belichick the lion's share of the credit for what they've been able to establish in New England. But that goes – He's had Tom Brady for 20 seasons. Now so you're finally admitting that. Hold on. Aha. Uh -huh. I didn't not. I, I, I never. Ah. I, it's not a situation where I didn't admit Saw that. Saw the light. But what I'm saying is, there's no question that Tom Brady is the greatest quarterback. You can make a case mm. whether or not he's the greatest football player. I don't think that you can make a case that Coach Saban has coached any of the greatest college players at any position since he's been head coach. And his quarterbacks leave a lot to be desired with the exception of Tua. Tua came in the, the, uh, the last what last game of his freshman year, and then last year had an unbelievable season, so he's back one more year. He's had Tom Brady 20 seasons. And I know everybody said, well, he gets the best players. Well, recruiting is a large part of coaching. Hmm. So I went Coach Saban slightly only because Coach Belichick has had that guy that wears number 12 that's real corny, cheese ball -y, mm -hmm. but he mm. can flat out play. Mm. So what happened when Nick Saban tried to coach him pro football? Skip it. Disaster happened. What he happened? Failed. When, what happened when Coach Belichick miserably. tried to coach in Cleveland? He failed and, miserably. Until he got Tom Brady, he da -da. failed. Yeah, okay. there we go. <laughs> Nick Saban took over a tradition at Alabama that has always been able to feed off itself okay. in recruiting. Right? We'll and he did time. take it to another level. Another level. How many years has Nick Saban stepped on a football field as the head coach of Alabama without the best team on the football field? Every, every game he's had, had the best and team. And when is the New England every Patriots? Every game. New England Patriots. Every when, game. When has the New England Patriots been an underdog? In the last 10 years. How it's, many times? It's because of number 12. Oh, it doesn't matter. And he got it. Huh. So when Coach, when okay. Coach Saban get another number 12, then I okay. have to balance up. But out. Belichick can't recruit because they don't spend money in free agency. They'll go get the rare Stefan Gilmore and spend money. Yeah. Worth every penny of it, by yeah. the way. But he has to make a lot of big, little crucial moves around number 12, right? Well, so he actually has to do his job. Well, here's the thing, though. But when you get that guy, let's just take for the – think about this. Dabo Sweeney is going to have Trevor Lawrence because of the rules for another two years. That's it. He's not going to play a senior. He's getting him for two more years. Coach Belichick has had Tom Brady for 20. Okay, but who dominates the first round of the draft every year? Alabama does. Yeah. They're just scattered yeah. down the yeah. first yeah. round. But Skip, you're Quinn and Williams, Skip. how high will he go? Yeah, he'd probably be top five. But here's the thing, Skip. You're dealing with teenagers. Mm -hmm. You're dealing with 18, 19-year-old kids. Yeah, but, but you've got man. all the best ones. The, the, hey, you, you got to coach them up. The truth is he never wanted a star quarterback. You, you coach, yeah, He's yeah, having yeah. a hard time with Tua. It, That's not how he does it. it they run the ball and play defense with the best athletes on the field. No, you do. Way to go, you coach. Do, you do with what you have. Mm -hmm. He got a guy that can throw it, you throw it. When you didn't have guys that can throw it, you run it with Mark Ingram. Mm -hmm. You run the ball uh, 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 with, with these big backs mm -hmm. that he has. Eddie Lacy. Mm -hmm. uh, Henry. That's mm -hmm. what you do, Skip. 
Yeah. And they, you win. They got more of them. They're going to have like three drafted Josh Jacobs. I, I don't know about all that. Come I'm on. just saying. They're loaded. I'm just we, we're splitting hairs. We're not splitting oh, hairs. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Who has oh. had the number one recruiting class whoa, whoa, like whoa, whoa. the last 10 years? I want to hear you say Alabama. It. I want to hear you say Alabama. It. I want to hear the words come out your mouth. Are you saying that Coach Belichick is the better head coach? No. This question. No, 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 no. Here's Who's the, the better point. head coach? This question for me is the flip side of the one we did yesterday, Dak or Baker, because those are like choosing between your kids. No, right? it's not. But this is choosing between the lesser of two evils. Yeah, exactly. And the lesser evil is Belichick in this uh, oh, game. Oh, really? Well, because Saban doesn't really coach. He just recruits. Yeah, he does coach. Huh? He does He's got coach. a bunch of assistants. No, no, no. Well, they say he coaches the DBs who get torched every game. Okay, so what about, I don't know. Okay, if, if so what about his assistants? He huh. doesn't have assistants? I, yeah, he's got the best offensive line coach in pro football. Well, so that so, works. Yeah. So I give you, him that. are you say, so in other words, so you finally admitting it. Yeah, maybe Tom the, Brady yeah. got help. No. He no, got no. the best coach. Exactly. You just said he got the best coach. You yeah. said he got the best coach in the world. That's what you just said. Want to know the truth? Both these head coaches are way overrated. Don't do that, Skip. Yeah, they See, just you, are. Ru- you know what? You ruined a perfectly good debate. No. This was a very I good think debate. You're gonna go there. No. Well, well, come on. Well, I, I have to go Belichick because he actually has to do something. What do you have to do? As you said to, Tom Brady does it all. Yeah. You just told a, me Tom Brady does it all. All the other guy does is get on the private jet to go to this household to go meet this mom, and then it's over. Close the deal. All the other guy does, you tell me, is just stay on his headset. Yeah. Oh, I got Tom all Brady. All right. Easy. Okay. Did the Rams make a major move in free agency <laughs> yesterday? Did. We will explain oh, next. No mercy. Time for our final topic of the day. After 10 seasons in Green Bay, Clay Matthews is now a Ram after agreeing to a two-year deal. The six-time Pro Bowler is the Packers' all-time leader in sacks, but he had a career low three and a half last season. So, Shannon, how much will he help the Rams? I don't think he's going to make that much of a difference, Skip. Mm -hmm. I mean, as Jenny mentioned, he had three and a half sacks, and he played in all 16 games. And he's averaged five and a half sacks over the last four seasons, and he'll be 33 in May. So I don't see the impactful player that Wade Phillips had when he had Von Miller or when he had uh, uh, DeMarcus Ware. Mm-hmm. I don't see that type of an impact. AJ Watt. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying for the linebacker position. Yeah, yeah. So I don't see that type of an right. impact. Maybe it's more for leadership in the locker room or something, but I just don't see uh, because Green Bay can ill afford to give up their best players, and clearly they didn't think he had anything left. Well, they just gave up Randall Cobb to the Dallas. Clearly, they didn't. Yeah. Clearly, yeah. they didn't think he had. We got him. There. We got that. Well, you, you know what? I think this is a very good. It's not a huge move, but it's a good move, because obviously he's from the neighborhood. He's Agora Hills, Hills out in the valley. Yeah. Sure. Played at USC in this Coliseum, so he gets to literally come home mm-hmm. to that stadium. Mm-hmm. And I think he's got one more good year of football. Not great year, but good year. A revitalized last hurrah year for a, a defensive coordinator who's fun to play for, yeah. and he'll fit experience-wise with that defense because it's a shrewd bunch of operators. And, and may, who defense. knows? Maybe the weather is warm all the time. Yeah. Maybe that does wonders for your body, Skip. It's, oh. You know, it gets cold in Green Bay. You know, like, like yeah. It's so yeah. you know. a different kind of cold there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, he, hey, he, but I, I, I just don't see the impact that he's going to have. Yeah. You better hope he doesn't because y'all play Green Do y'all play Green Bay this year? Like Green Bay? Yeah. Well, the, what's left in Green Bay? They yeah, exactly. Have, they didn't even I have mean, a quarterback. I mean, y'all play oh, the Rams. Y'all play the Rams. Oh. Y'all got the Rams. Yeah. Woo-hoo. I mean, I, Green Bay is like off no, no, the no. map now. Oh, they still have oh, the oh. No mercy. Thanks for listening to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm Jenny Taft. Join us again at the same time tomorrow morning, 9.30 Eastern. We'll see you then. Fox Sports. One of one. one.